Welcome to the 55th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So damn paranormal. I'm your host, Jason Knight, president and founder of Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies. Joining me tonight are... Oscar. Is it an is? It's okay. We gotta start over. No, we don't. No, I thought no, we were joking. No, it is not. It no. ain't. <laughs> it's fine. That's Oscar. I'm Dave. That's Joe. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, Oscar. Who? We got last names. Oh, Oscar. Um, uh, uh, Specter. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm of course Dave Black. And that is uh, that. There is Joe. I don't Eerie. remember. <laughs> Joe Eerie. We're all here tonight. Oh, thank you. Or Jewy. It's been. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long and time. And we classically uh, mess up the intro. I didn't use the F word. Um, we classically fornicated for you guys. So there you go. That's right. We're, doing our show. We're, f- we're back together. It is mid-November. As of this recording, we haven't really seen each other since beginning of August when we did this Nevada yeah. I was curious why extraterrestrial so and ghost you know. odyssey. Actually, you're supposed to pronounce it Nevada. Nevada. It kind of doesn't seem long enough in a Nevada. way. Nevada. So for the 55th episode of the Supernatural Current Studies podcast, I wanted to recap the last seven episodes, the last was it seven for almost real? four months that we haven't been together recording. I wanted to recap yeah. all the episodes and also that have because been coming we have out to, since. We have to record now. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to record, yeah. So we've been doing a lot of drinking. We kind of waited for the last it's week. It's really time late. To drinking. We have months to record. But before we actually start recapping, yeah. most of uh, the listeners probably noticed we have a new podcast name, Oscar. Oh, wait, it's no longer really? SOS-Radio. Well, tell them yet. Yeah. I, can't, I, I can't tell you how many times I told people SOS-Radio, and then they'll like call me or message me, and they'll be like, We what, can't find it. This, what, what? What, what is this find? Christian is it, radio it's station? SOS, comma, radio? Right. So it is the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast on iTunes, Definitely Oscar. shorter. Soundcloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Podbean. And it is word, everywhere. It is and the word occurrence though. is double C, double R. Right. Thank, Thank you. Dear. Double C, double R in occurrence. But really, if they search supernatural occurrence, that they'll find us. Two C's, two R's. Is it still Chicago's own, or did we drop <laughs> No, we dropped Chicago's own. Right, it's that just, was, like we're making a pizza. Like Chicago we're making a pizza. That was very annoying. <laughs> That's can we, right. Can we swear so, now? There's been a lot of changes yeah. over the last... Can we swear? Three and a half. We could swear. Go we're ahead. rebranding. Rebranding. Fuck. We are rebranding. I mean, we're still the same guys. We're still doing the same thing. We're just, you know, changing the packaging a little. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And we're we're just so damn paranormal. So definitely so damn paranormal. Um, so we got a new podcast name, Supernatural Current Studies Podcast. Oscar, uh, got heard. that? Yeah. We have a new website coming. Within the next week of this recording, there's going to be a brand good. new website. I didn't even check out the last one, so good thing I missed that one. <laughs> What's the new website? It's um, Chicago Zone no. Pizzeria. No, it's not that. Chicago Ghost Podcast dot com. I just, I, I'm and our new slogan is Soda Pa. So damn Supernatural paranormal. Thanks, good. Soda Pa. So yes, we got a new website coming out. Uh, Chicago Ghost Podcast dot com. So damn paranormal. And, remember uh, how I remember how I never wanted to the use spot. the word ghost. Remember that? I do remember that. But if you think about it, Dave, ChicagoGhostPodcast dot com. Those three words are our, are our biggest tags I guess. Uh, for what we do. So, so when it comes to search engine optimization, SEO. So all this confusion you're feeling now, listener, especially if you've been listening to us it, for over a year, you know what, it's just it. to make more money for us. Fuck it. Let's just call it DaveBlack.com. <laughs> Dave no, 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 perfect. No, no, no. ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. We call it Black into Dave. We should, we should call it Chicago Ghost Podcast iPhone X <laughs> Fidget Spinner. <laughs> 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 Um, so, yeah, ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. Uh, if you still go to SOS-Radio.com, there, there's still something there. You'll get to us. Uh, we got a new logo for iTunes. Still Everyone for the new website. Then we have Chicago SOS, too, right? We have multiple Chicago domains. SOS. Chicago Ghost, dude. Chicago No, S-O- not Chicago Ghost, dude. <laughs> no. Chicago Ghost. Chicago, Chicago Ghost, dude. Yeah, we have SOS. Dash radio.com. We have ChicagoGhostPodcast.com, which is the new website. I think we should. We have uh, ChicagoSOS.com. And all the conspiracies of all these names that we're creating. Why don't we try? And we have SupernaturalOccurrenceStudies.com. Every single domain mm-hmm. will get you to the new website we, of okay, we should Chicago do. Ghost I have Chicago Podcast. Ghost Wait. XXX. No, I got, are we guys. fucking married here? <laughs> guys, I have the perfect... 
idea. This is this will get more people here than anything. It's what gonna is it? be Chicago. Uh-huh. Um uh, uh-huh. all right, here we go. Uh-huh. It's gonna be <laughs> yeah. it's gonna Drum be roll. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna be it's uh, right SOS dash, but the word dash <laughs> <laughs> Then a dash after the after the word dash, then Chicago, then another dash, then the word dot. It's basically a fucking more. This guy is a comedian. All right, forget it. We're I don't drunk, know. So folks, if you could get to that domain, I will I will send you something. But um, so not only do we have a new website coming out, not only do we have a new website uh, podcast name. <laughs> <laughs> we've been drinking. Uh, we have a new kite. We got a new logo. What do you guys think of the new logo? I like, I like it. it. It's good. It's a graphic yeah. novel. Yeah. yeah. Look us up what on about iTunes. Chicago Booze. Will you t- hey, guess we're, which we're past one, that? Guess now. which one is mine? Oh, which one is ours? Chicago which one fits booze. who? Uh, that'd be great to have our listeners point out. Like, I think Jay's the one on the right one. Or oh, top right or so we that segues perfectly into our new contact email. So our new what email. Contact, okay. Does all this require me more editing? No. Oh, thank good. <laughs> our new contact <laughs> email. Speaking on. about contacts. Are, are those Oscars real eyes or are they contacts? Mm. They, I always said yeah, he had nice eyes. All right, what, them. Is, the, what is the new email? Done. Say the email. <laughs> contact at chicagoghostpodcast.com. Simple. Contact at chicagoghostpodcast.com. Like so I think Oscar had a great idea, guys. Look at our new iTunes logo mm-hmm. and email us and let us know who you think, uh, who's who. By the right. way, Davey's exactly who you think it is in that <laughs> <laughs> um, So we got let – me, let me recap again. We got a new website. We got a new podcast name. We got a new so logo. So this is the show. We're recapping all we the We have a new uh, email address, contact at chicagospodcast.com. We have a new Facebook page, too. We have too, new mics. Guys. Oh, we, no, we don't. We have a new Facebook page, too, just at Chicago Ghost Podcast on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Leave us some comments. We'll read your comments on the air, guaranteed. Is that a brand new Facebook page, or did you just rename it? Well, it's new. Okay. So we're building up users again. Okay. Um, so you could have probably just named, renamed the old one. I guess so. You know, you guys come with these ideas after the fact. <laughs> I email you. I call you. I text you. Guys, I need this. <laughs> yeah. I need that. You don't get back to me. I make the decision, and then you're like, hey, we should have done this. Not to sound weird, but Dave always comes too late. Ooh. He does. Uh, oh. And, of course, Better you can always find us. On Instagram you scratch me right there? or Twitter Sweet. at Chicago Ghosts. <laughs> you guys are fucking married. <laughs> I'm scratching Apricots. Dave's back right now. Yeah. It's nice. You, you, don't like have much, you don't have much for nails, but it's No, I don't. Right. I chew my nails because I'm always nervous. Yeah. I, yeah, because you have to do his goddamn intro. So, so, Joe, what is our new podcast name? So damn paranormal. <laughs> please, no. don't, please don't quiz me. <laughs> That's our new slogan. Chicago Sh- Ghost. Shy Go Po. Supernatural Occurrence <laughs> Studies. Shy Go Po. The Supernatural Shy-go-po. Occurrence Shy-go-po. Studies podcast. Don't ask me. What's our new website? Bro, don't, don't Chicago ask me. Booze. No. B O O Z E. Somebody's going to take that now. It's Chicago we should Ghost open up a home Podcast. Called dot booze. Com. Great, more work. Yeah. All right. How do you get a hold of us on Instagram or Twitter? Anybody? Five eight eight two three hundred. <laughs> no. <laughs> At Empire? Chicago Ghosts. And what is our Facebook? Our new Facebook. The word dash. Dave Black. No. <laughs> At Chicago Ghost Podcast. At Chicago Dash Ghost Podcast Dash Jay. SOS Dash Chicago's own. You're the slash systems manager for a fucking I, loony bin. I really lost control. Within the first two minutes of the episode, I lost control. Yeah. All right. So, listeners, check us out on the new platforms. Hey, guys, what are we doing? Or don't, because shipping. by now you're confused as, as hell. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. So damn paranormal. <laughs> I gave Joe I one gave job. Joe one task <laughs> to say our new slogan so damn oh, they're paranormal. Gonna get it. They're gonna get yeah. it all right. And that's all he's gonna do. Next week he's gonna say it's so damn Felicia or something to mix up his shit. <laughs> Bye Felicia. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, all right, all, all right. right, all right, all right. So we've had a lot of episodes come out, as I said, seven episodes. We haven't been together Yo, as a unit since the beginning of August. This is now mid-November. Uh, I just want to do a quick recap. What the hell has been going on with you guys? Uh, Dave, you got some big, exciting news. Yeah, I, uh, so back when we got back from the trip, actually, um, I closed on my property. And uh, I am now a landowner for the first time in my life. Congrats. Thank you. Tell I us own, about the land. I, owe, uh, I own two and a quarter acres in Iroquois County, Illinois. 
Um, it's uh, just south of Kankakee. It's about 70 miles south of the city limits of Chicago. But it takes about two hours to get there because it's literally in the middle of nowhere. It's like nowhere near any major city. So you have to drive. Uh, you have to get off by Kankakee on the highway, and then you have to drive like 25, 30 miles into like nothingness to get to it. Wow. So when you're going there, like if you were a passenger going to my property, you would think you're about to get murdered. What's the alarm code for your place now that you gave all this I information? I don't have the alarm okay. set up yet. Um, <laughs> <What's that interesting? laughs> but um, I don't have anything there unless you want to steal like an old like uh, trailer with no wheels. Um, but um, so... The property, I purchased it for a couple of reasons. One, I've been going to that area for years looking for reptiles and amphibians, snakes and things, because I'm a hobbyist of snakes and reptiles, much in the way people are go fishing or go bird watching. I'm kind of the same way, except I don't eat the snakes, and I don't just look at them. I actually catch them. It would be weird if you went bird watching with a net. But, um, it's strange. Um, so... That's why I bought land there because it's this really unique habitat called Sand Prairie. Um, it's similar to a desert. If you've ever been out to the Indiana Dunes, it's a really similar habitat. I think you remember our experience at the Indiana oh, yes. Dunes when I broke my pelvis. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I believe you guys are right, still right. banned from He there. left me. He literally left me with a, with a, a fractured pelvis. Do, do we want to know about this? It was funny. Another time. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, so there's like cactuses that grow there and all sorts of unique Cacti. plants and animals. In Illinois? Cactus? Cacti. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Pr- prickly pear cactus. So, you said prick. So I've actually found a couple of... <laughs> I've, I've actually found, um, I think, eight or nine different species of reptiles and amphibians on my land proper. Um, in fact, I found... Uh, last time I was there, a couple weeks ago, I found a Endangered species on my property, a ornate box turtle, which is state. I saw endangered. that on Facebook. Yeah, um, it just it was just a shell, but it's actually going into the Illinois Natural History Survey collection, and they're going to come out and survey the land and stuff, and hopefully wow. that will. Hopefully they won't just snag my property and be like, okay, we got to protect this now. <laughs> you just got Cause, annexed. Because that will, that will happen. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll protect the land around it from development so it'll never That's be awesome. able to get developed. Um, and the only thing they would I'm, pay taxes, though, right? Uh, what's that? They would pay the taxes on it, right? Um, well, they would if, if they did annex the property, they would give me some sort of market value for yeah. it, probably l- less than I paid. But that's what they normally do. They'll be like, we'll give you X amount of dollars per acre. And even if they did that, like I would still be able to – like have the front half of the property where my dwelling is and stuff. So there was a house on the property. It burned down. There's still a garage. I'm turning the garage into like a cabin. There's going to be campsites on the property. Um, the idea is I'm going to I'm going to be running it as kind of a survival camp. I'm you know I'm a nature buff and I teach people about uh, living off the land and stuff. So it's going to be kind of like a place to take people out and do events where we teach them how to live off the land and then I have different experts come by and show you how to break down fish and and prepare meat and preserve. You know, fruits and vegetables and things like that, and how to do sustainable plant growing and all that kind of thing. Um, so it, it'll it'll be like a full on like adult uh, survival nature camp type of thing. Um, but what I'd really like to do is uh, I already have like this big double grill thing that I built out of the cinder blocks from the foundation that's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we can do cookouts out there. I got a big fire pit that I built. Um, I'm going to build a smoker out there so we could actually do our podcast out in the wilderness. And it's the place at night is amazing. You can see all the stars in the sky. You're, you're hearing coyotes and owls talking back to and forth to each other and the crickets and the frogs in the spring. And it's just it's really just so peaceful out there. Could we bring listeners there, you think? Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking is we – Hence the very specific directions. Maybe we can, uh, you know, we can bring a couple of lucky <laughs> listeners out to, like, sit around the campfire and tell ghost stories, you know? So, um, so I think it's a great – I think it's a great thing. It's actually going to be called The Land of Odd. That's very awesome. nice. Because uh, my, my stage name uh, for stand-up comedy was Dave Odd. So that's kind of the name that I still use for that. Well, congrats on your on your purchase. Yeah. I think those skills are something that most people today are lacking. Yeah, and, and it's always great to get back to the basics. In, in, in today's America, I think everyone's a little bit more interested in uh, you know living in the wilderness and surviving off the land um, outside of just a novelty. They're like, I might actually need to fucking know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And if you've seen the Glass Castle, it's not like that at all. <laughs> So, well, good. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about it, and I'm really excited. We're going to have electric out there and stuff, so it'll be really cool to come out there and we could record like a, f- a full on podcast out there in the wilderness with all the all the critters and everything. And um, the the place is uh, 
you know, th- there's not much history there. There, it, it used to be. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, is it haunted or any uh, stories around? Not there? that I know of, but there's. It's it's an old area. It's been you know been inhabited for a long time. It's it's very um, sparsely inhabited. Like there's only like a house every like half mile or whatever quarter mile. Was, wasn't um, that area? I mean, it like, was, I know it southern was, Illinois, Indiana. Though it was swamp. It was well. It's not ago. southern Illinois. It's it's you know. North, well, it's still northeastern Illinois, um, or well, north, yeah, yeah, but I mean, of us, you know, but, but um, it was, it's basically, um, it was swan, it, long no, ago, right? that area was always like this sandy prairie area. Okay, well, I don't um, want to get too far off the rails, but, so, but, um, so basically, it was a resort town for people in the early 1900s to go down for, you know, and have like summer homes and stuff, and, and that's where the rich people would go, and then, um, once that kind of uh, faded away, uh, it started to get bought up by um, poor people because the ground there is sand. It's all sand. Um, it's in the Kankakee River Valley. So there used to be an ancient inland lake there. So all the, the deposits are glacial sand deposits and stuff. So um, it's not very good for growing anything. There's a big potato growing operation out there. As you can grow potatoes, melons, pumpkins. That's about it. But there's no really way to do commercial crops out there without amending the soil. So the land's really cheap. So um, it's kind of a strange dynamic, but um, about 90% of the people that live out there are African-American people that um, that basically bought up all these plots of land for really cheap, and they live in trailers, and it's really weird. It's like, uh, it's they're like, you know, they're like hillbillies. They're like black hillbillies. It's like, wow. it doesn't even make any sense. But they're really, really great people, really friendly people, really nice people. I have a bunch of neighbors that came over for my um, debut event. It was a really, I did like a debut thing for my birthday a few weeks ago and mm-hmm. um, it was a rainy, crappy weekend, but all my neighbors came out and we cooked out and it was really great. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be, It's. I, I imagine there's a lot of haunted stuff down there. There's always houses burning down and all kinds of things like that. Well, on Indians and stuff. Um, yeah, well, yeah, and then there's, uh, because it's sand and stuff, it's kind of like a dumping ground for like there, there was a girl that was murdered in Joliet the other day. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah, with from the out, Joliet, with the Chicago outlaws. Her body was found out mm-hmm. there. Um, so there's like, you know, there was a, a guy down the street a couple years ago that was murdered. Um, so things like that do happen down there. So I imagine there is a bunch of haunted stuff, and I'm thinking that maybe me and Joe can maybe lure some things onto my property. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. it's an experiment right yeah. there. I was watching like a documentary a long time ago about like a, a lot of like Illinois and Indiana. About most of it was uh, an Everglade type. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of the Chicago area was mm-hmm. swamp. Yeah. But so that area, it wasn't. It was just like I mean, no. Or, I mean, it hasn't been amended at all. It's exactly the way it's been for okay, hundreds so of years. That's why the sand was okay. Yeah. Um. But the uh, the cool thing about it is that um, it's it it really is like this piece of heaven in the middle of nowhere, and um, we can pretty much turn it into whatever we want. And I really look forward to making it a kind of a getaway for people to go out there. I'm building a huge library. I got like probably a thousand books already of just like nature and science books because one of the rules is when people are visiting, they can't use their phones, they can't use the internet. Um, you're just I think that's to be great. There, be Good. present in nature, you know. And um, so I've been, uh, you know, I go to all like half price books, like these bookstores that are discount bookstores, and whenever I see any kind of ghost book or anything, I uh, snap it up. So there's going to be it's like be 10 or 15. Do you, have, do you have Hans Holzer's? Uh, Hans I do, I do have that one. I even have a copy of Chicago Haunts with us. In oh, it. where we're in it. Yeah. Our photo's good. The one weird thing, eh? Seeing Dave away from his cell phone. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. <laughs> well, excellent, Dave. Thank you. Joe, what have you been up to over the last almost four well, months? Besides selling off my 80 shares of Bitcoin and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. investing in uh, other right. corporations. <laughs> I've been driving a truck, <laughs> right. buying stingray, uh, exotic fish. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you are a fish enthusiast. But, um, you spend a lot of money on fish tanks and exotic fish, rare fish. Yeah, we all kind of have. We all kind of have like weird eclectic, elect, eclectic hobbies. Yeah, yeah to, I like to, to collect to autographs. Away, I think yeah. from uh, the norm. You know, it kind of comes with our mindsets, I guess, yeah. being like that open-minded. Sort I need of thing. to be around water and animals. You know, that's kind of what keeps me at peace and calm with everything excellent um having weird dreams feeling you know a lot of things uh a few days ago i 
I'm not going to speak too much, but uh, a few days ago, I ha- I had a dream of uh, this this one lady came to me and she she showed me these different rocks, and uh, she uh, she holds up this one. She's like, you know what this is? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that's blue calcite. And she's like, exactly. Use it. Hmm. And I'm like, who is the woman? Well, I have no clue. And um, I'm like, okay. And uh, so I, I had some blue calcite laying around. I've been, I, I, I sleep with uh, like quartz or like you know green calcite, like, like a certain like uh, crystals or stones underneath my pillow to help amplify stuff. And um, I'm like, well, okay. So I uh, went and I grabbed some, and I've been sleeping with it the last couple of days. I actually I have some on me right now. Well, look at that. Um, he does. He pulled out a whole pocket full of rocks. And I, uh, I, I looked like up my uh, son, dude. Yeah, but <laughs> I, 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 I looked up the metaphysical properties of it, and it was, you know, to enhance, you know, uh, communications with, uh, uh, to help communicate like with, like with, with, with spirits or people that are giving you like advice, you know, to uh, it's for for higher powers, and that's exactly of what I want to do. Hmm. Uh, last couple of days, I've been sleeping with it. Things have been coming more, and it's, it's it's been giving me a headache. A lot of times when I do <coughs> sleep with stuff or have things on me, it um it gives me a really bad headache for a while because it's so strong. Wow. And um, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. But that, that it was really strange, you know? Well, we'll talk about some of those experiences in the upcoming yeah. shows. Yeah. Yeah, Very I can good. honestly say I don't think I've had any really weird paranormal things happen lately. Yeah, I haven't either. I guess I'll, I'll go next uh, since August, since we stopped, uh, since we got back from the trip. Just a lot of travel. Three this wonderful months, guys. Yeah, the Three summer was a lot of trip for trips for work. Just really busy summer, work, family, go, 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 sleep when you can sort of thing. Uh, no Mr. Lincoln. No Mr. Lincoln in, God, I haven't talked about him in. Oh, it's been like six, at least. At six least months. six months. Yeah. And, you know, my whole purpose. He's on this, business trips, too. This whole podcast mm. was to That's shed true. light on these things and hoping that. You know, Mr. Lincoln would go away, and I, I could probably say, yeah, at least six months. We haven't well, talked about any Mr. Lincoln sightings. It's because you're distracted. Yeah. Maybe. So uh, just a lot of traveling, a lot of family stuff, you know, all good things, positive things. Uh, nothing too exciting on my front. Oscar, you mentioned uh, when we were talking offline that you had an, you had something going on. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. At your home? I the cooler? Know. The, the nano Kevlar of paranormal activity. Nice, thank you. Um, that's what they call Something me. Something happened too. to you. Nano Kevlar. Uh, so, a box elder bug. yeah. So my girlfriend, who is more uh, sensitive to this sort of phenomenon, is um, has always had a pre- you know presence of something there, and she's told me before. And overall, it doesn't really um, affect me, or it does like very little compared to her. And um, she's safe as long as I'm there, which obviously she wouldn't be in my place if I wasn't there. So. Right? Just the gist of it. Um, she's right next to me. She's uh, right next to you. Hi, Lexi. Hi. Hey. Um, so I never got anything from the place. Um, you know, sometimes I would get like a weird feeling here and there. but I just what, Wait, what place? My house. Okay. Uh, sometimes I would get like a weird feeling, but I feel like just me being alone or it's the silence that's creeping me out in the moment. I don't really, I never, I'm more like, uh, like the scully here, and I don't think of it as something weird or paranormal. I think I'm just freaking myself out or I got a weird moment or I don't know. It's me psyching myself out. That's what I'm thinking. But I got one that was more legit. And I don't know how to explain it. And I did not wake up anybody in the house to, you know, I didn't tell anybody about it in the house because no one, it was just four in the morning. Uh, so what happened was that I was going outside for a smoke. I was sleeping in the basement. And I noticed on my way out that uh, there's this, um, like towards the front of the house, towards the basement, there's like a room, this little, little mini alcove looking room. That is all stone. It's clearly not worked in. It's not used as anything except to hold toilet pen, you know, uh, toilet paper and like old luggage. And um, the light was on. The door was open. That shit's never there. The light's never on, and it's never open like that because people just get what they need immediately and then leave. You, that's the the, me, the the purpose of that room is not to use it almost until <laughs> get you get really out. need it, right? And I saw both those things were open. Like okay, someone left it on weirdly, and the door was open. So I closed it, turned it off, didn't sense anything. Went outside. Ten minutes later, I came back inside. The, the The door was still closed, but I had a weird feeling. Don't know what exactly. I didn't think about it really at the time, except that it was just very strange. And 
I guess I it was felt ominous to me just because it was strange, but I don't know if it was necessarily an ominous thing, although my girlfriend swears that it is something ominously bad. Um, I opened the door, and the light was on. Huh. And that was the extent. That's, the mo- that's all I got. There's no punchline to that beyond that, except that I freaked myself out when I saw that a little bit. And I turned it off, closed the door, and I played Overwatch. Um, <laughs> so, because, like, I just got, like, I was like, okay... I kind of like told it to the room, like, okay, I, I get it. You want attention, and I went away. So, what do you think it was? Uh, probably this thing that Lexi has been telling me. So, there's something at your house. I mean, yeah, I guess so. In or Chicago. something uh, with me, maybe. Maybe you guys sent something to me. Maybe you brought something home from Nevada. Probably. That could be anything. But well, she says. I know what it is. Yeah. It's that mask that you have. <laughs> We're not going to oh. talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. No, we are not going to talk about that. Oscar, edit that out. Well, no one will know what the mask is. All right, we're not going to talk about that one. Um, the no. DVD oh. of the movie The Mask, <laughs> right? With yeah. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Yeah. yeah. Carrey. Uh, yep, that's what it was. That's what it is. No, I did not. No, I did not. Trust me. Nothing I'll happened. tell you about it. There's a reason why we can't talk about. It. Yep, off the air. Um, so. Um, like I said, that's why then I think it is something relating to. But no, this has happened before <laughs> the Nevada trip. That huh. She's told me about this stuff before. And a lot of stuff that I say in my sleep is not only me sometimes, apparently. Right? Okay. So according to her, she knows she wakes up from it. <laughs> wow. Because I, I, I talk. Am right. I, I going to have to change the wording, the, the, the paranormal sensitivity level, nano Kevlar, to something less? To just Kevlar? Less? Yeah, but you know what's weird? Yeah. I've never heard him talking about this. Before. I know. This is strange. It's very, very, it's very, very peculiar. Rare. The only other time I felt something was on the trip. <laughs> Where uh, at? Well, you know, with the alien sightings. Um, yeah. And um, cool. I think we're there was one other one. I listened to all the that. shows. I still say that was a star. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> hold it. Uh, we're hold it. Uh, hold it. We're going to get there. <laughs> we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oscar, um, anything else? So that was a, just a bit. Other than that, I've been you know doing a bunch of podcasts still in my off time from here. And I'm about to start a new podcast soon, Hope. Uh, with this girl, we're doing a couples movie review podcast. I we, like it. We force each other to watch things we wouldn't watch, you know, independently. Oh. So, like, I'm gonna make her watch are Back you, to the Future. Uh, She'll make me watch Lexi, the crappy movie. Getting involved in are the you business. excited to watch all the Step Up movies? I know. Oh, no, no, it's gonna be <laughs> Twilight or a Twilight. Have Lexi say something. They call it. We okay, like Lexi. Uh, yeah. Lexi, say hello. I'm gonna make him watch High School Musical. High School See, Musical. See, I've never seen that shit in my life. I yeah, avoided right. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to make her watch like The Godfather and shit. Cause Zac Efron, no though, he's pretty yeah. boner worthy. Oh yeah, Zac Efron. There's a new movie coming out. I think it's called. Uh, yeah, the Martin and Bailey Circus oh. one. I heard you. Uh, you paint houses. What the fuck are you talking? It's a new about? mom movie. What? I heard you paint houses. Really? What are you talking? Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking Is about. Is this Paint Your Wagon by Clint Eastwood? We'll talk about it in two two months from uh, from now. Well, I got. I mean, I guess you're I got. Hip. Before we segue into the, to the Nevada podcast releases, I got some cool autographs. Uh, you know, I collect autographs. It's kind of my my obsession. Richard Simmons? No, <laughs> I, I got, actually uh, can buy one for you. My friend has one in his shop right now. It's Richard Simmons. He's attached to a fork, like with his hands. Up. Is it you? Are you I, serious? I, is it Yule Brenner? I would. Brenner. I might yeah, buy I that. Would, yeah. I would probably buy that. So I got uh, I got Rollins. John Gotti's autograph recently. That's. I think that's the coolest. I got uh, Henry Rollins uh, autograph. By the way, if you want Black your Flag. Chuck Manson autograph, now's the time. I got uh, Doug Bradley's autograph recently. Pinhead. Linda Blair's autograph from Exorcist. I th- I still Reagan think the McNeil. John Gotti. That's yeah, my, that's I, my got, uh, I got. I got. If you want Egon, good, eh? Ray, Wait, and Venkman's autograph. Egon. Yeah, I got them all. Did Bill Murray, dead? Dan Aykroyd, and uh, Harold Ramis's autograph on a Ghostbusters oh. photo. Shut up. Just had that framed. Wait, why didn't I out here? Why, I you got, lead uh, with that when I come into your house. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I'll show that. you. In my, it's in my office. Too late, man. Okay, uh, yeah. And I got uh, Milvina Dean, the last, uh, the the youngest person on the Titanic and the oldest Titanic survivor. Oh, there's the Richard Simmons. Sure it's, pronounced, enough, it's pronounced Titanic. He, first he of all. is chained to a fork. <laughs> I would buy that. Wow. I would definitely yeah. buy that. So okay. uh, um, so I have Melvina Dean's autograph, that, and I also have a piece of coal. Funny little thing people would know. I live from on the street Titanic. called Melvina. You do, it. yeah. I yes, do. yes, you do. Jesus, that's true. He is attached to a fork. So I guess that's new for me. A couple new autographs I acquired. Yeah, other than that, I've just been working and, you know. Is that, is, that, is that Rosie O'Donnell? It is. That is Rosie O'Donnell. Who, where are all these autographs? Yeah. I mean, I don't want Rosie O'Donnell's no. autograph, but... Nobody wants them. Yeah. I, I was going to get... So let's talk about uh, Charles Manson. Chucky Man. I'll see if he's... Something. Chucky Man, today, November 18th. He is pretty much dead. 
I'm not saying that we like Charles Manson, but Charles Manson has a lot to do with kind of the topics we talk about. Without him, there's no natural born killers by Oliver there's Stone. There's no serial killer talk. There's no interest without Charlie Manson. And technically, he never so murdered him. Charlie him. Manson is on his deathbed. As of uh, right how much, now, how much behavioral science divisions did that guy I create? I should have gotten his autograph before he's about to kick it, because his autograph is going to inflate in price, like the Bitcoin, like the Bitcoin. Yep. So, with that said, uh, let's segue into the Nevada podcast releases and get you behind. Say that <laughs> <laughs> I say it like a widow. Yeah, like, like a, a white guy. Yeah. Uh, let's get behind the scenes with the uh, Nevada podcasts. I would uh, like to encourage our, our listeners to go to our YouTube channel, Chicago's Own Supernatural Occurrence Studies on YouTube, because a lot of these podcast releases also have corresponding videos to them. So you could actually see the locations we we're in, like the first topic we're going to talk about, podcast episode 48, Live from the Clown Motel. There's a video on YouTube called The Look Inside the Clown Motel. So check it out so you can see what we're talking about. Um, I was really excited to get to the Clown Motel, super famous on all the TV shows over the last year or so, year plus, uh, and we got to go. We got to investigate ourselves. We had free reign of the place. Um, oh, yeah, we did. You know, we didn't do much of the, you know, independently, like the rooms. We didn't. Did we walk around the actual motel the, area? All right. So yeah. the, are the Clown Motel, this is the one thing. Like, and I, I found the cemetery to be the most. I, oh, yeah, for sure. No, not for me. All right. So, so oh, yeah, no, when, when we went in yeah. there right away, I was like, oh, my God. I started yeah. feeling all this So stuff. Joe and Dave, you, you guys did a, a walk yeah. initially. She, she's like. Uh, she's Tell like, us quickly about that. So, so right away, I, I, I went in these places. I'm, I'm like, boom, like, I, hear, I feel something here right away. Oh, my. This room, th- this is the hot spot. Something bad happened here. Like. I knew right away. Like I mean, like we clicked. I'm just being quick. So she's and and I, I'm a, we I hung out with Tatra for a long time. She's like, wow. She's like, out of all the ghost investigators and everyone that's ever been here, and this including all the TV shows, yeah, all, 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 the, all, all all everyone. That she, all she, those jokes. Like, you're the most like accurate out of anybody. She's like, you, I never told you anything. None of these people even knew because I never even told them. Yeah. But you hit all the spots where I and I feel stuff and I know that are there. She's like, that spot that you went over there and that you felt, she's like, I always see stuff there. Um, mm. She's like, all the TV shows and this and that, they never talk about it. And then you walked in that one bathroom. Uh, that's where the guy died. They don't know about that. They never talked about that. Wow. And, and I was like, well, and it makes me feel like cool. Like, well, wow. it's validation. Because Absolutely. I'm like, what I felt, it happened. And I didn't know. We don't know it before we go in. Absolutely. I don't like to. And, of course, the she you're referring to is, was the night manager, Marlena Dufour. Yeah, she was, yeah. She was awesome. Yeah, she, she was awesome. a great interviewee, uh, great subject. Yeah. Dave, what did you think? Um, the, the motel itself, like, yeah, there were some vibes there, but it was nothing like crazy for me. That cemetery next door though. The Tonopah Cemetery. That was, that was intense. That was the most intense I, I had felt anything on the trip. The cemetery? Um, the cemetery. I didn't feel anything in the cemetery. I got the strongest hits in the cemetery. Um, and, um, was it, was it you? I was to, who was I, I with? Mean, oh, I was, I was with Oscar and we, we heard a voice behind us um and Did we couldn't notice what it said or no we couldn't really tell what it said but but joe and jay were across the cemetery and it was kind of like a, mm. very open and windy so i don't know if it was right. something so, just a word like caught a in the wind or, came something. Over or something yeah it wasn't but very it was it was definitely coherence. we were we both heard it come we, uh, we were standing face to face talking we heard it come to like it was to the it was to your right, I believe. I mean, sure, I don't remember that little details. But, it, but it, yeah. it definitely sounded like it came from a direction that was not coming from you, where you guys were at. Wow. But it was, it was, you know, slightly windy and stuff. So who knows how the sound could have carried? It just, you know, happened to pick up a word that you guys said at the right time and projected it to right. us or whatever. But yeah, um, it was definitely we both heard it. And we both recognized that it was something unusual. And you know, I haven't heard auditory um, stuff in a long time, so that was that was pretty cool. Then after that, then we went in the 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 room with all the clowns. Like the, well, the yeah, we're kind of so the the Tonopah is kind of jumping. The Tonopah Cemetery is kind of jumping forward to bring it back. We did the walkthrough right. of the the uh, the back room, the clown room, the front office area first. 
And that's where I had a pretty profound experience in that back area by the the laundry units, the the HVAC units, the heating and air conditioning units back there. Uh, Joe, you picked that out as a hot spot in the beginning. Yeah. Um, when I was back there by myself uh, with the Tascam and an EMF meter, I was I was in that area by the, the it, 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 we'll just call it the laundry room. I was in the laundry room, and I was kind of talking out loud, asking it, hey, show yourself, give me a sign, yada, yada. The Tascam had brand new batteries. Brand new batteries were put oh, in yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And yeah. as soon as I said, ask me, for, show me a sign. As soon as I asked it to show me a sign, boom, the, the, the EMF meter spiked the off the charts. Dead. Tascam, dead, gone. Just gone. We were having the same problem with our TAS cams outside in the cemetery, too. And the cemetery was the second time, yep. so I had to run back out to the car, replace the batteries in the TAS cam, catch up the episode, and eventually went out to the Tonopah Cemetery next door to the Clown Motel. The same thing happened. In the episode, you hear Dave saying, it's here, it's around us. He's speaking to it, and all of a sudden, boom, brand new batteries completely zapped. In the Taz cam, and I had to catch up the episode again. Right. That's never happened to me before. Twice within it was within probably thirty minutes. You always hear about that too. It's like, oh, it, you know, it fried this, or you know, it cut yeah. the, and it actually happened to us. That's so one I of the few things that. that I can honestly say is consistent with the lore around hauntings and stuff. Is that the equipment? The, the equipment and... does, in fact, yeah, and it it might have nothing, you know. Always whatever, go analog. This right. is the thing. That's right. Is whatever whatever um, uh, energy fields are present to to contain or create a haunting, like the 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 elements that need to be in place for a haunting to occur, might be the same elements that zap the batteries. It might not actually have anything to do with the energy that's there. It might have something to do. Like you know what I mean. It might not actually be the entity itself that's doing it. It might just be the physical environment that. Allows the entity to exist. Gotcha. Which it totally could. It's a profound I, I had two idea. Two instances a long time ago when I was younger, there was a blackout. Okay, all the lights went out. Boom. We're we're hanging out. We lit some candles. We're, tell, we're telling some ghost stories. All of a sudden, a radio in my mom's room came on. It was like a. It was like it was an old song, and um, my parents look at each other and they look at us. They're like, <laughs> whoa. So we we go. We walk in the room. And they look at the, you know, it was actually an alarm clock, which had a radio on it. And they look, and it's like, well, this is off. Why is it playing right now? And then they go and look, and it was unplugged. What? Yeah, and we're like, whoa. Later on, like, I mean, like, about, like, 15 years later, they're like, hey, we didn't want to scare you, but that song that was playing, that was your great-grandparents' wedding song. Whoa. Yeah, it's like I will see you again wow. sometime when like it was like you know when it was like whoa my parents' house is like really haunted. I mean, but like, were there yeah, batteries we, in it? There was not. <laughs> Almost <laughs> all those alarm clocks have batteries. No, 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 no. Because no. we looked, there wasn't. That's pretty crazy. Sure. But in another another time too was you know like Will, um, his my well one of my your friends, musician partner right? Yeah, his house is uh, haunted. And um, the TV would come on all the time. And uh, we'd be hanging out downstairs. All of a sudden, you get this big chill. And all of a sudden, the TV would turn on by itself. And so not only I think it could take away energy, I think it could bring on energy. Well, could be. I mean, and, and that might be what was happening inside the Clown Motel's lobby. Because as you alluded to, Joe Erie, we had um, spikes on the EMF detectors from specific clowns which we got that were that were there right we know what it was yeah with zero uh, electrical interference mm-hmm. remember the equipment we use listeners is very dumb it's very it's not sensitive stuff you have to be up against uh, something emitting EMF in order for this detector to signal an outlet for example um, we had two clowns in the lobby that reacted uh, to our EMF or our EMF detectors reacted to these two particular clowns one was the sad clown from New Orleans right no not the New Orleans clown if listeners go to our YouTube page and see the clown motel episode 
you'll see the the sad clown. It was first shelf. Pagliacci. Yeah. Next, oh, next I, to I, Mr. I thought, Creepy, I, he's the, he's the clown that had the note with him. Yeah. He had a handwritten oh, yeah, note yeah. That from hand. the owner. I thought yeah. there was another yes. one though from New Orleans that somebody. Well, no, that's cool. what Marlena said. Stuff happened around that yeah, that New Orleans one, but we didn't. The one that looked like a so the sad clown was one. Yes. And oh, the second one, yes. do you remember Mr. Creepy? The yeah. The big ass clown yeah. that everybody sees he on TV? Yeah, but he wasn't. It wasn't it was Mr. Creepy. Figured, yeah. it, so what we started, we, so like, was we, the put, one. we put the EMF detector, we were, we were kind of feeling out all the clowns that were in there. There were hundreds of clowns in this lobby. Oh, horrible, just creepy. Um, so we were kind of trying to find the hot ones. And we stopped on the sad clown first. Yeah. No yeah. outlets around uh, yeah, him. On the, on the no left, on, underneath. Yes. electronics yes. around him. Nothing around him that would allow this EMF detector to register. Mm-hmm. And it did. Um, we would move away from the sad clown. EMF detector would go to zero. We'd move towards the sad clown. EMF detector would spike. The second one that we got a hit on was Mr. Creepy. Yeah. And that's you, the clown you, with the human up, hands. Did you yes. pick up the clown? Sitting in the rocking chair. Yeah. Did you pick it up pick up the physical clown and move I didn't, it? I didn't touch it. No. Okay. But we, we looked around it and you could see it in the video. It's it's just yeah, and, and there's we, nothing there. It's we're just, like, all right, it's on well, a shelf. you know what? I think but Mr. Different. Creepy that everyone's afraid of, yeah. right? It's All not, the TV yeah, shows no. were afraid of. It wasn't Mr. Creepy, no. was it, Joe? No. It was a hand knitted yeah. clown that was sitting on Mr. Creepy's lap. Mm-hmm. That when we removed it from Mr. Creepy, the EMF detector followed, it spiked and followed that hand-knitted clown that we moved. We brought it back to Mr. Creepy, nothing. Brought it to the hand-knitted clown, boom, clown, it, boom, it would spike. Do you know what made me kind of like think that it might have been the handmade one? Or? Yeah, because you're the one who figured it out. Yeah. Want to know why? Why? Because I started thinking about like kind of like just witchcraft and intent. And uh, I'm like, okay, well... If you have intent with anything, you're putting energy into it. And uh, right, if somebody handmade. actually handmade it, you're putting energy and putting effort into it. And uh, whoever made that, maybe subconsciously, not even meaning to, you. I, I'm like for an example, you make a painting, you die. I mean, who who knows like where you're going to be or what realm or this or that, but. You might want somebody to, you know, that that's a part that you left in this world, you know. I mean, somebody might have made that for, like, a loved one or this and that, and there's an attachment to it, you know. Who, yeah. who knows? You're right. You're right. And it's, in a, in, a, in, a, in a weird way, they're attached to that because, like, they, I mean, I love creating. I, I, I love art. That's all I ever want to do. As a musician, right. But, I mean, and not only just that, anything. And it's like, but how much art do I actually really create? And uh, it's, you know, the the stuff that I do create, it's like, you know, it's, you, you, want, you want to see what people do with it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it seems like an eternity for us, but, like, for them, it's so fast, you know? Well, it was definitely that hand knitted uh, clown. That's that's what was registering. And it, not what everyone says on television, folks. It wasn't the big clown you would see that's notorious with the clown motel. It was the one sitting on its lap. Yeah. Oh, did so. you guys talk about the one that came to life and started stabbing us? No, we were gonna, I thought yeah, we were going to keep that, that off the that, air. That was <laughs> the one stabbing you in the butt. <laughs> and then, you know, let's talk about the tailings real quick. We had the tailings, the. The removal, the 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 stone. Oh my that God! Was you removed. remember the term? I do. Nice. The, what? the the stone, the rock that was removed from the Tonopah mine. I think it was like a pile of rubble. But remember, yeah. and that's of, uh, where. So do you remember in the Tonopah cemetery? Yeah. The very back of the cemetery is where that big tailings pile was. Oh. And they say there's Chinese because yes. Chinese helped build the mine, uh, buried there, unmarked, uh, forgotten, lost in time. That's where I had the, I guess I would, the most profound experience in the Tonopah Cemetery was back at the foot by those tailings where bodies are supposedly buried. It, to me, just felt like uh, paranoia. Uh, I was not in control of what was going to come next. It was just this really heavy, ominous, oppressive sort of feeling um, by the, that tailing pile. So. 
See, I, I know we, we all feel different things, you know, like, I mean, for example, it's like Dave and I, complete opposite. It's like a yin and yang, you know, I think it's just different energies. Um, but with, uh, like I, I didn't feel anything in the cemetery, but I, I did feel just like empty, calm, like just nothing. Like a just a, like a, a a dead air, hmm. if that makes sense. It's definitely creepy. I mean, no, no. <laughs> you have but, this clown motel, which is just horrifying of itself, next to this. Yeah, I I I, I, I just think that um, burial ground. It's it's different energies that we feel, you know. And I I think when like sometimes like when I feel like the the dead emptiness, it's almost like a dark, hmm. you know, like a like a dark like a dark energy. Um, and I think that's where Dave comes in because it's like, it's like, I, I, I might get like a more like, like a, like a, like a warm, like, uh, I, it, it's just, we, we feel separate things, which is awesome. We experience the paranormal it, differently. In, in Absolutely. Depth, yeah. But yeah. And like, in like, in layers, it, it, it is, it is really weird, but you know what I'm saying, Dave or no? Yeah. Cause and, and like I, I know like a, like a long time ago like when Dave and I had like met you know it's like it was kind of like you know, weird for like a little bit like where it's like we don't believe each other like where it's like oh like is he lying is he lying you know type of thing but I I could tell you I I'm I'm feeling all this stuff all of a sudden Dave comes by and I feel it leave me and just go to him no. and it it's it's weird it is weird well let's see how that feeling progresses throughout the episodes yeah let's see so oscar anything you would say about uh clown motel uh clowns there are clowns everywhere a lot of freaking clowns i mean i guess i got another paranormal thing there because dave and i both heard the same muttering or voice you know typically it's just in the cemetery so i guess i was a part of that because i heard it too excellent Wait, welcome to the club. Of that. No, but I didn't feel anything in the cemetery. I love walking through it, especially when it was daylight more. I yeah. could see it and read everything. Just ancient. There was like a crib looking. You know, they look like cribs, some of the... Some of the tombs. Right, or like, in, you know, like in tombs. And they were all handwritten. They had right, the... Uh, right, right. They how had the a, people they died had an artistic were written. prisoner that did a lot of it, right? That's right. right. So there was a prisoner, a prison program right. uh, that went through and, and program, refurbished right. some of these yeah. tombs. Yeah. yeah, these markings, which were basically just wood. And this Two is just a fours. ten. Year, it's a, it, this was only used for ten years, guys. The cemetery, years, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, no more than that. Did, if a lot some, of shit happened: fire, a murder, and two murders, or something. You know, didn't some lady an say outbreak, that, uh, yeah. right? An outbreak, right? And what was the, the cemetery too? Was it, uh, 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 pneumonia, plural some, pneumonia. Uh, plural pneumonia. pneumonia. Said, uh, good, uh, good. A prisoner from a local prison. <laughs> That's what we were just saying. Yeah, went and Bro, refurbished a lot of those those grave markers and then of course the grave markers had uh, a lot a lot of them had the cause of death on it which you don't see very yeah, often so yeah. it's really cool I'm, I'm really glad to say that uh, we got to go there oh yeah uh, it's um, a really special place I'm trying to remember all the places might be my favorite looking wise other than the Rylite. I really like Rylite. yeah we'll get to that we'll yeah. get to that uh, so uh, Clown Motel at the end of the day Haunted that's the the hundred yes. percent. Ab- absolutely, the the motel definitely, but not not to any greater degree than any other place I've ever been. But that cemetery was off the charts for me. Great, good, Wait. and that's what this is about: going behind the scenes, that getting our ba- take on these stops. That bathroom, I mean, is, is where the guy died, where the person died yeah, in the bathroom. She yeah. said the guy got killed, or is is, is is there anything ever said about that? Anywhere? Never, never. They always we, focus on the clowns, that, that front office We area. should look into that. But like, it's Which not even like, it's, when we say it's right next door, this uh, cemetery, it's literally a, a foot yeah. away from yeah. it. Like, yeah. It's their backyard. It's, We're not kidding around. It's not around the block, across the street, none of that. It's right next to it. If you have a anyone fe- stays there, honestly. Yes, if you have a fear of clowns, of ghosts, of or, cemeteries. The of cemeteries anything, alone is just, just weird. Do not just, go. That's the weird but Not the clowns are not weird do for not me. Go. But, and, like, yeah. and like literally yeah. underneath the building, there's people that have died. Yeah. There's at, yeah. That's, 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 what, that's what we think. And yeah. those hotel rooms are the worst, the ones underneath it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if you, cool. you're paying attention. And of course, guys, before we went to the clown motel, we stopped at um, the... Hot Spring. Oh, yeah, in, yeah. That uh, was cool, too. Warm yeah, Spring, Nevada. Uh, very nice. Th- that was a bonus episode release uh, from the 
Warm Springs. That's right. It was just us, like, that was fun talking about the sulfur. Warm Springs, the Nevada. That was yeah. fun. Me and Joe went on our own little separate adventure. We Joe went up onto the mountain. It was side. awesome. Me and Oscar, Oscar, Oscar and, and I, I <laughs> went uh, skinny dipping, essentially. No. No, we didn't go skinny We're dipping. fat. And, We're fat and you dipping. know what I found out later on? Uh, <laughs> it was great. Those brain-eating amoebas are. Did you really? I swear to you. In that, po- in that yes. pool where we swam? Yes. Yeah, you do swear a lot. I'm dead You're serious. not joking. I'm not kidding. The brain eating amoebas because it's so warm. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I, I don't believe him. You believe him right now? Well, I mean, obviously dead, we're fine. I'm dead serious. <laughs> really? You're fine? We're so alive. It's four months later. No, I'm saying you're not been lost. I was looking at all this motor stuff. Motor functions. Like, Thank uh, God I didn't I've been get forgetting those movie titles more faster and, uh, than usual. Yeah, so we went into this abandoned hot spring. It's been abandoned since like what, fifties or sixties? Fifties, no more than that. 50s, but that's yeah. where they hang out. And it, they, it, you know it was beautiful. I didn't release this YouTube video because I feel I'm not oh, you in didn't? shape. Oh, really? You didn't it's release on it on YouTube? I, I everyone just saw my tattoo as, by now. I thought the I internet knew about it. I have it set as private because I feel I'm not in shape. So I sound smart. Smart. Go ahead. I, I don't know Scientific anything about it, but uh, I've make, only seen it's it's literally it's at the yeah. very end of ET Highway. Right. But uh, yeah, it is Warm Springs, Nevada. It's a ghost town. It's technically a ghost town. Uh, there's nothing there uh, where we went and swam. Oh, there's definitely a deadly scorpion. And where Dave or, and Joe went uh, uh, critter hunting, there is a uh, abandoned a yeah. hot spring Dave that you could semi- get through the fence. Lizards. And go swimming in this hot spring, and 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 the the the, the pool that we swam in is is fed from the mountains. It's a natural stream. Yeah, and they call it foothills. Right? The foothills, yeah, right. comes we right down. We cut our first down. horny toad. Yeah, oh, we. That was the awesome. water comes right down the foothills and empties into this pond, this this pool where we swam. Right. And we frolicked, we played. And the ground is all like, it's Frolic? like all this weird Sulfurous, You know, your, your choice like, yeah. of words are worrying me. <laughs> we just w- waited in there. We just swam. That we weird, like, sulfurous clay stuff. We did. We got into the, the hot spring, and we were up to our, you know, like, mid-shin in gunk. Just gunk. Well, funk. You didn't, hey, you guys didn't pee And in it was water, sulfur. No, I did not pee. Okay, because if you pee, Wait, they, did, they, I they shit have... In it. Brainy amoebas that swim through the urine. Well, a lot of times I do think with my cock, so <laughs> oh. brain eating. You get the connection there. I do. Right. So I didn't release no, the video because I'm I'm a little ashamed because I gained weight, but uh, it is out there. We'll I see. I think you look fine. Just but it was are. a great experience. Hey, Jay. was it not, Jay. Oscar? Jay, was it a what? Speaking of hot Mike springs, what, what kind of experience? Swimming in the hot spring. Well, what, what, what was, was it? it? Not a great experience. Jay. Oh, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I loved it. You I have great tits. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I get laid, so that's you what sure wear the man. Uh, so you, that was a bonus episode. Just Never. wanted to cover that really quick. Uh, cool to say that we did it. Yeah, it was uh, for me and Joe. We went off into the, like the actual ghost what are you town. Saying me and Joe, it's Joe and I. Joe and I went off onto Thank the you. onto the mountainside where there were uh, where there, there were all these structures of old. Um, I don't know what they were. Probably they were part old, of like, Warm Springs at one time. Cellars or whatever. They weren't. They obviously Literally, weren't dwellers. Because that so used to be a town. It yeah. used to be a town. But they were all like falling apart and stuff. And we were looking for lizards and critters and stuff. We saw scorpions. Yeah, and like, and hey, Joe, grab that for him. I'm, I, I don't know what it is. That's fine. Don't worry. You're not. It's, it's fine. It's not poisonous. Huge scorpions. It's not poisonous. Collared lizards, right? Um, yeah, we found collared lizards. But they uh, were free. Horny toads. Yes. We found uh, some other weird uh, sl- uh, fence, fence lizard type spiky lizard guys. I didn't even get them all identified actually because there were so many of them. That He's like, similar. "Don't worry, they're not poisonous." So like, and then the cattle they're started coming poisonous. through. Yeah. Do you guys remember the cattle coming through? Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, this just wild herd yeah, of cattle weird. comes running through. The, uh, the different types of scorpions. That was cool. Yeah. Remember that giant rock? Like I lifted up, and the guy, the little kid, he's like, "Dude, <laughs> you almost got, you almost got stuck." There was a little kid up that. there. Yeah. There was a teenage boy. He wasn't a little well, kid. It's okay. the middle of nowhere. What's he doing up there? He was well, there with his parents. His parents were oh. like poking yeah. around the spring, and he was off. And he's like, "If you well, I did run that, into a, like, you're gonna you're gonna seizure and this and that." And I was like, "Oh, great. I ran into a car of. Uh, do you remember the car? The two people in the car." When we walked out of the spring and we, we dried off and got re- and got dressed again. Yeah, the locals. Those crazy fucking meth head looking people. Yeah, they were methy. They, I thought they were going to kill they us. Were on the, they came off the set of Breaking Bad. That's what they did come off the set of Breaking yeah, Bad. Yeah, but then. They were scary, dude. But then they no, they weren't Dave scary. They were just methy. They were like, bad. Just a we bit have methy. To watch out for these people. A lot of methy. 
So, okay, let's. So, we did with the bonus episode. Great. Warm Springs. Cool. Episode 49, live from Area 51, an interview with alien expert Ken Langley, Agent 0051. Lexi, did you listen to that episode? She said no. She Great. Said no. Thanks for the support. At least she was honest. So, guys, let's talk about uh, episode 49, live from Area 51, and, and, and Ken Langley. Ken is the guy to seek out in Rachel, Nevada, the last populated town uh, before Area 51 proper, um, and the conspiracy alien information he shared. What did you guys think? Because I got a lot of feedback, especially on Instagram, uh, at Chicago Ghost. Surprising amount about of Ken. subjective opinions about the stuff that he might have seen or has definitely have seen or worked under. So do you buy what he said? Because some I, I of the things he said are very interesting. Was just just very earth interesting shattering. ideas. Very interesting opinions on things he's seen. I uh, I don't know if they're doesn't mean they're facts. He liked to believe they're facts, I'm sure, but he 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 could kind of was like playing the line between like uh, stating it as if they were facts and like just giving an opinion about something. He was a very colorful character. Well, we we will say. Um, well, his rainbow wig was very colorful. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go ahead and say that, uh, and I kind of feel like some of the locals sort of had the same sort of opinion that like he's just sort of. He's saying what he thinks, um, or what he what he believes he's seen or experienced. But you know, take it with take it with a grain. We, of salt. I think we could tell in, in re-listening that epi- re-listening to that episode, uh, Dave and and Ken were kind of at odds almost. Uh, water and some sort of oil water and oil, a little right, bit, right. a little bit. Some yeah, but that's kind of like how Dave and I think we're at the beginning too, you know. And I think that's why we're different energies. I mean, guys, think about what he he was talking about, not only aliens but being an abductee. Well, uh, he was see, bringing religion into it with the, with demon demons. That, that's my favorite and part, actually. What the, he said about that was kind of cool. The, yeah, that they're they're after our very. I'm not saying I believe souls, that, but I like I like where his head see, was. See, my, my my perspective with him, I liked him a lot. Man. I, I, I thought, loved that episode. Dude, he, he was fuck. Dude, Ken was so cool, man. Dude, you, being you able in, you felt you felt you like you were at home. Well, like, no, yeah, I, I was just so overwhelmed with him. Like, I want to ask him a million questions. <laughs> I didn't have enough time. Not only that, but when we turned to our right from where we were interviewing him, we're looking at Area 51. Yeah. And according to Ken, we were under surveillance. And that's why he was during the recording of that insane. episode. He, 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 it, I mean, dude, we work, Jay, we work in corporate. You know how we talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's complete corporate, but military corporate. Yeah. So it's like, you know. Not only that, but the the artificial intelligence that he talked about that roams and patrols. Yeah, the the Rachel Nevada area, the borders of the, Area Fifty One. The ATVs, the robot ATVs, the robotic ATVs that are armed. Yeah, but but it, does that really sound that crazy, dude? We could it we could drive a car on a highway with no driver, uh, and that's what we know about. You're going to tell me that they don't I mean, have, have this drones. sort of... Could, exactly. And we easy. saw the drones. We photographed the Predator drones but launching. That was, a, that was a totally different place, though. That, that was, was that, that's on a, the other side. That's of, going towards yeah. the alien cat house, which we're going to get to next. But um, if they, we have that kind of technology that we know of today, I guarantee to border to protect the borders of Area 51, there's something he, even more sophisticated. He, he was very knowledge, knowledgeable on a lot of subjects. And, like, he, like I... I would point to certain things, and, and he would fucking like say to a T what it was, and he'd be minimal about that. But then he'd throw like things. I I, I know he knew what he was talking about. Again, know? he is the guy that media seeks out mm-hmm. whenever they want to do a story about these I liked topics. Him a lot, man. I did too, Joe. You had. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Yeah. You had a dream before we went to see Ken Langley. Agent zero zero five one. Yeah, like every once in a while, I you had a dream about. I was get, I get these weird like visions sometimes, like but like, like I was I was laying in bed, and uh, and this um, was while we were on the trip, correct? Or yeah, right before when we, you had this the night dream before we went. Yeah, I'm laying in bed, and then we're driving through the desert. I just see like desert, you know. Then I uh, I rabbits. have a dream of. Uh, this uh, this big um, uh, Star Trek logo, and I'm like, the hell? 
And it's it just it, like, the, like you know, like the like whatever it is, it's like the triangle, the chevron, the little chevron. It looks like a little little spaceship. Kind of, uh, almost looks like a, a chevron would be the. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, he's right. Chevron. Dave's right. <laughs> but it looks like an in, like a like an Indian like uh, spear like uh, arrowhead type of thing. Whatever, chevron, uh, chevron. Uh, but you know what I mean? If you don't know what the hell a chevron is, it's it, it looks like a. You know, like an arrowhead type of thing. Yeah, a yeah, we, we got it. Star a Trek. Chevron, okay. You had a dream about Star Trek so, and yeah. Wizard of Oz. And then, uh, I, I, need another, I need another drink. I had a dream of Wizard of Oz, but it was the Tin Man. And this I'm is like, true, for like, listeners. This is true. This shit popping in my head. I'm like, all right, cool. And I, I'm like, on the way up there, like I didn't even like want to say anything, but. I'm like, you know what? If I don't say something and something comes from this, no one's going to believe me. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to just throw this out there really quick. So I tell you guys on the way up there. And then uh, as soon as we get there, he starts showing us around and he has this big, what's it? A chevron? Chevron. So he a had chevron? he had an artifact from Star Trek. Wasn't it... Uh... A chevron, huh? You know, well, like it almost little, looks like an arrowhead. <laughs> a little Spock doll. That, that's what it was. It was a, 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 um, like a, a Spock bobble, doll. Head? Bobble head? Bobble yeah, head. bobblehead yeah. of Spock. So Star yeah. Trek. There you yeah, go, Joe. But this big cabinet, that big chevron or whatever. But what it did, that, that Spock was on... One of the NASA ships. What, NASA a ships. space shuttle? Yeah. It was like one of those high-altitude planes, I think. That actually made it to space. Yeah. So... There's your connection. At well, least. no, but then we looked in that big like glass cabinet and it had that big chevron thing, the big thing. You the, saw big, that. the big, the big Star Trek yeah, sign, huge in there. And I was like, so we had the Spock. Spock like, Holy crap! We had the Spock bobblehead. Then later on, and we uh, had this, the big Star Trek symbol. Yeah. So there, it correlates to your Star Trek dream. Yeah. Well, yes. Next, you also had a dream of the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. And I was like, and I do. I have a lot of gay friends. And uh, so Ken was, yeah, he was yeah, gay, dude, whatever. Was gay. It's cool. He was awesome. And and I was like, oh my god, that's what it is. And and I'm like, hey, I'm like, and I'm like, and, and I even told him like, this is so weird because on the way up here I had this and this. I'm like, but what does the Tin Man mean? And he he's he's like, maybe the. Uh, I'm I'm like, oh, oh this I was asked, off. I asked, this oh, was actually, off air, of course. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm like, so what's what. What's with uh, the Wizard of Oz? I'm, he's like, well, maybe it's not a. What do you say? A man? Or, or maybe it's not a. I, I, for, I forgot. What I he forgot said. how he worded oh, yeah. it, but it. But but, but what, it had what to do I with God. I was like, Go oh. It had to do with being empty inside, well, and he had lost his partner. Yeah. Uh, empty. Loss. There's a oh, void. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what's Tin up, Man, what's no up heart. Because I, I, I totally didn't know that. I'm like, yeah. What, what's up with the Wizard of Oz? And he's like, well, maybe, uh, maybe it's not a man. And and he looked at me a certain way that gave me the eyes, and I'm like, oh, he's gay. And I was like, it just, I just knew it was the knowing. He didn't say it, but I, you know what I mean. And then, right. uh, and I'm like, oh, that's what the Wizard of Oz means. And later on. I heard about his husband uh, or the, his partner. His partner, and I'm yeah. like, and the, and the Tin Man is the emptiness inside. Because his, his partner died. Yeah, and that was what, one of the reasons. Partner die again? It was a disease. I want to say uh, cancer. cancer. Ken, if I'm if you're listening to this and I'm wrong, forgive me. But yeah, yeah. and and it's like I'm like, oh, that's what it is. There were, those dreams were pretty so prophetic. Weird, it was that, so we got the spark the Spock. Bobblehead with Star Trek dream. We have the big Star Trek symbol in his curio cabinet. The Chevron. The Chevron symbol. We had the you you dreamed about uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, I mean, let's the, not even get into somewhere over the, the rainbow, the, right, the, guys? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the the, the, but the, the, the first the Tin I Man, the emptiness, the, the loss, desert, the void could have been whatever. But it was you know yeah, desert boom. Then a- after that, the Star Trek symbol. Then the Wizard of Oz, and then with the Tin Man exactly. Yeah, and it's 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 weird. The man. Star Trek symbol. But o- other than that, man, <laughs> I mean, track. the Star Trek. The moment. So when I went back and listened to the episode, the moment I introduced Ken Langley, the voice was just immediately captivating. He's yeah. got such a, a radio presence, I guess, Oscar. Um, sure. 
Dude, Hollywood. It was yeah. just a little gravelly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, just that the voice was just, yeah. it grabbed you from the get-go. Yeah. And that, that was kind of the feedback I got on, on that particular episode was just, what a great interview. Oh, good, yeah. because I thought I would have I thought I would have been more negative. Thank God. No, not at all. I worked out. I, I don't think I got did, anything though, negative he, he from him. He did pick up on Dave's uh, negative vibe. Huh? Yeah, him and Dave, they were no, kind I'm, of at no, odds no, a little bit. He knew a, right a away. fox three counties over can pick up on his negative vibe. It, he's, that's, <laughs> Dave's the scully. I mean, not you know, hard at all, Dave's going to believe what he wants to believe, and that's okay. I think that's what makes us us. I'm like, not negative. I just, you know, no, I, I you just kind of roll be my negative. eyes at things when people are talking so what sounds like crazy. That sounds like negative. You know? yeah. so, all right. So, <laughs> never mind. I'm not even going to So, Ken, we all agree that was awesome. Yeah, uh, thank Dave, you, Ken. That was awesome. Yeah, Ken, thank awesome. you. It was. It was It was a really fun interview. Really, really I was fun. just and recording. Hey, and, Dave, <laughs> that was you that didn't flush the toilet. <laughs> ah, sorry, Ken. <laughs> yeah, it was Dave. Uh, but I mean, man, just sitting in Rachel, Nevada, being you know a uh, uh, half a mile from Area Fifty One. I mean, just uh, supposedly under surveillance, uh, audio, video, uh, while we were doing this recording. It, it was just who could experience that but us? I mean, really. And we bring that to our listeners. I mean, that's that's what we do. I, do, I can't believe we witnessed that murder too. Oh uh, we're, well, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later. I don't know if we should or episode uh, fifty, the big five zero. Dave X rated. It really is a first time for a podcast. Apparently, for this episode. No, no, for podcasts in general, it's not a very common thing we did in episode fifty. It, you're correct. I did not, think, I did not believe it. Did you research it? Did you look into it? Yeah. No one's done it. No one's done it. We did it. High five. Let's listen to this. How is that possible? No, hi. Okay, all right, all right. right, High five. Episode 50, the big 5-0. Dave. Is that that silver? X-rated from (laughs) the big 5-0, episode 50, Dave. X-rated live from Dennis Hoff's Alien Cat House. Listeners, go to our YouTube channel. Watch the brothel walkthrough. See what we're talking about. Uh, this was a crazy, crazy episode. Lots of awesome feedback on a, our, on this episode. This is probably the, the most popular episode from our Nevada podcast release. It was the least paranormal episode, probably. It, you know, yes. at the end of the yes, day. True. We had conflicting interviews about just anything. At the end was, of the day. It was, it was a fun aside. It was like Not a, too much paranormal. No. And, 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 and no, I, totally I told our I contact, Richard Hunter... Uh, who's the uh, Dick Hunter? Dick Hunter, right. the, Dick Hunter, the media right. director for Dennis Hoff's Alien Cat House franchises, and one of the co-hosts of a Phone Booth Fighting Podcast. Listeners, check it out on iTunes. Uh, I told Richard this was going to be our angle. We're not coming in there with an agenda, but this is our angle: the haunted, the paranormal, the strange, the salacious, the weird, the crazy. Uh, we got weird and crazy and salacious, yes. but not too much paranormal or haunted. I also got the no, best. actually, do we did? You remember? Well, and we're going to talk about your feelings, yeah. but uh, again, this was probably our most popular episode out of the Nevada podcast release. Everyone loved Richard's interview when we interviewed was, Richard about he was, the. He was so. Per, per, he was. He was everything great. perfect. The, the way he spoke, articulated as hell. Yeah, it was good. Getting yeah. into what makes. A Dennis Hoff brothel, a Dennis Hoff right. brothel. The yeah. legalities, the you yeah. know, how do they keep it clean and straight and narrow? How do they keep the mafia yeah. out? You know, I, mean, it, I never asked myself those questions, but yeah, all these things were like, oh yeah, that's true. You never, the movies we don't explain this exactly. If you see movies like no that, no one uh, gets this yeah. part. The side, right. this insight. Right. This is the guy that found Lamar Odom, the the L.A. Acre, the the two time NBA champion, Lamar Odom. O D. This is the guy who found him. Yeah. He told us a story that no one else ever heard, uh, but on our podcast about the guy who sued oh, the yeah. alien cat for, house for not for not pretending to be dead enough or something for the pro- the working girl working girl right not playing dead enough when he wanted to fuck a dead body right 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 this is or the simulate you the one yeah that was that's a weird story yeah, that gold was, that was bonkers that, that was, was gold that right? was crazy yeah. Um, and Leilani, who shit on Dave so much. Oh, Leilani. She's my favorite Leilani because she Strux. shit on Dave so much. It was perfect. What's up, Leilani? Uh, my girl, Leilani. Uh, her and Dave, the banter back and forth was just 
hilarious. It's called You I Guys mean, Should Travel and Do Road Shows. That was fun times. That is what yeah. podcasting is about. She shut off his mic. It was great. Hilarious. <laughs> but, guys, oh, guys, guys. So we got it. Pearl Harbor? We got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're part of Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> Hawaiian and Japanese. What do you think about Pearl Harbor? <laughs> That's so damn paranormal. Nice, but we got to talk Pick out about the bats, though. Leilani is beautiful. She's awesome. Hi, Leilani. But we got to talk about Taylor Gates. No, yep. the the now infamous Taylor Gates. The vibrating ass plug. I was really worried that uh, Gates. Could you guys hear her? We, well. we we did hear her. Did we get complaints about that? I was curious. I, I got no complaints about audio. Okay. Uh, no, I got no complaints about this episode at all. As a matter of fact, we did. One, my, I, I think my favorite email. Because some of these, I think they were big mistakes, and no one's talking about them. So I'm glad no one's talking about the mistakes in the audio. But <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk so about far. audio quality in a little bit. But I got I, I didn't get a single negative uh, review on this particular episode. My favorite. Uh, response from this episode was a, a gentleman named Steve F. I'm not going to say your last name. From Florida, Steve F. If you're listening, you know who you are. He said, uh, I listen to an ass ton of podcasts. Ass ton. <laughs> an okay. SOS dash radio podcast episode 50 will go down in infamy. Great job. So we got a lot of great feedback on this. Um, Do you know what they reminded me of? What? Ass Super tons? Mario Barler is number three. What the Super fuck? What? <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, you, even Lexi perked up. She's yeah. like, what? What? I heard something strange. What do you mean? Super Mario <laughs> Brothers. Three. Crazy. Three. You know, three. You know, you know like we're saying it louder. Like, like raccoons. <laughs> saying it louder. You know what I'm talking about or no? Oh, I do we're now. Not a, we're we're, yeah. we're degrading. We're, we're degrading. We're breaking down. What yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, right? I do now. You know, I used to be able to fly. Yeah. I remember picking turnips. Huh? I That's remember, part two. Never mind. That's part, part two. two. Yes, yeah, so that was part two. Which I kind of found racist because they say Italians who came off the boat are fell off the turnip truck. So oh. that Super Mario Brothers two was kind of racist. Have me. you seen the movie? No. That's oh John Leguizamo. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, guys. Tell me a story. Who's going to tell the first story about Taylor Gates? This is the vibrating. Well, that, that's why you mentioned the raccoon thing. So I'm, I, I got a right. And Lexi, I'm sorry. I know you're sitting here, but you guys were broken up at the time. <laughs> Taylor Gates, God bless her. She was gorgeous, right? She was pretty. Mm-hmm. Pretty woman. A little bit bots, a little bit crazy. But uh, that's what made her her. She, uh, Coma City, uh, she had a ass plug. Raccoon. A raccoon tailed right, ass plug. Was it raccoon plug. or skunk? I don't remember. A raccoon. Okay. Inserted in herself. And apparently that was the craziest thing they found there, too. That our producer extraordinaire. <laughs> Controlled the intensity of. Oh no, that was a different one. But what? yes, yeah, was, right. You were control. Yes, in, yes. Instead it was. of editing our podcast listeners, Mr. Oscar, I Spectre was editing. I was doing both. Controlled <laughs> the intensity of Taylor Gates' ass plug, vibrating ass yep. plug. She gave me the controls. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, that's got to be a metaphor for something. I mean, if someone gave me the controls to an ass plug, I'm playing pong. Pong. Ding, ding, ding. I'm cranking, How old are you? I'm cranking I'm the wheel. Curious. How old are you? I think yeah, I'm 22. 22. All right. Times. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> nice. 18 years ago. Uh, Taylor Gates. Taylor Gates, the one who forgot that she had uh, insertions into her. How did she say it? Oh, I don't remember. Her woohoo or hoo 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 hee hee. I'm sure she just said ass, right? Vagina? I don't know. Did she say vagina? But I don't remember. She said she forgot that she had these things up inside her, to which Dave replied, did you ever forget your cell phone in your back pocket? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <It was> so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I don't uh, remember Dave, that. what did you think, man? It was, uh, yeah, it was It was uh, pretty pretty nutty. Um, like I said, not very paranormal, but that was uh, it was a lot of fun. I like to be. Uh, uh, Jay learned a lot about fun situations butt stuff like that. that day. Jay. What did I learn about? I learned a lot about butt stuff that day. You did. There was so much butt play going on at that recording table. Yeah, and I was very. Uh, I didn't know because my mom listens to the show, as Dave pointed out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that was funny. Was he really, pointed uh, it out on the show. <laughs> Joe, what did you think? 
I, mean, I, I think that you and Oscar shared a hotel room together the whole time. <laughs> we're talking about episode 50. I just heard butt plates. Okay, what are you guys talking <laughs> about? You were sitting at the oh, table with not, us. Don't get too excited now. What, uh, I mean, episode 50 was really popular with it the was, listeners. It was definitely an experience. I've never experienced anything like that before. I didn't know what to, exper- what to expect. Yeah. I, I, I worked for I didn't, a yes. long time trying to set up the interview. Especially being Italians from Chicago, the places that we, you know, the cafes. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? That we... Go, go to yeah we yeah. don't know what the hell we're gonna walk into but it was very clean yes very inviting they were they were kind and a pool table a nice bar nice pool table bar they had uh you know oh the smoke rooms. inside just smoking that was great that you was were my smoking. favorite part like a smoke inside yeah. uh they gave us a great walkthrough of the facility that listeners could see on youtube um joe you said you had some feelings Oh yeah, tell us about the paranormal stuff. The lights. Yeah, I didn't really get much paranormal inside. stuff. Well, that I wasn't all sure. Right. So, so like, I mean, there's like, I really didn't feel too much, but I, uh, I felt in uh, in this one area, um, where there was there was the massage room or whatever. Yeah. Where they had like a, a shower, and then the um, bubble room, right? I think they called it. Wasn't the bubble room shut down? Well, yeah, but it was, yeah, it was yeah, under yeah, construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, all right. So I, I felt in that area, the massage room, whatever. And then I felt in, in this room with all these windows with the, the workout room. And then I felt in this one where it was like the $15,000 a night room, whatever. And then I think at the end of the day, we, th- we were saying 15 Gs, but I think it was 15 Hunj. Oh, really? I think it was 15 Oh, whatever, whatever it was. I thought that's what he said. But so anyway. She. He he's like, well, actually, the the rooms that you talked about, he's like, that's where we bought. He bought, I guess, uh, Dennis bought those like from an auction. That that's right. Um, the guy, uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, the uh, the physician that gave oh, Michael that Jackson like the lethal dose yeah. of painkiller or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then and and then Conrad and, and then, Conrad Murray, right? Wow. Dr. Conrad sure. Murray. I don't remember. I should keep drinking. I get smarter. I guess. <laughs> you just remember. It doesn't mean you get smarter. The one, the, the, my, my favorite person there was uh, the, the lady that uh, ran the place. I forget her name. We gave her a T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, we gave them all T-shirts. Man. And, and actually, when I, went, when, when I originally watched... Uh, uh, what was her name? I think she was actually in the original Cat House in HBO, too. Well, was that the bartender, right? The one that was serving yeah. us? And, right, right, right. She yeah. watched in, all the girls. Run in the rooms, watching she, the girls, yeah. Um, she's like, did you talk... Did so-and-so tell you about this? Oh. Why I, 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 we there was another girl that we didn't talk to. Yeah, there were quite a few yeah. girls walking. We interviewed yeah. two. She's Other like, ones didn't want to be on the like, show. I wish she talked about this because they couldn't say anything. But they other you know she's like, oh, I wish she talked about this. There's a lot of shit that happened that I think that we brought up that they didn't talk about, and the areas that I brought up, I think a lot of stuff happened at. And she yeah, knew because she heard. You had that. the workout room. Cat House room. CSI, you were doing there. Yeah, you had the workout room pegged. You had the fifteen hundred dollar night room pegged specifically the furniture mm-hmm. and the spa um, room. And yeah, something outside the spa room, some, the, like right outside the hallway, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, also the, the other thing is that a lot of these girls are revolving, so like they don't stay. They're not there very long. Yeah, yeah, there's they, shifts. I think they there's, go through all right, the different houses. Exactly. So, you know, it's kind of, I guess, to keep it what, they spicier, had like, maybe. They had seven different locations or something. Yeah, something like, at least five. All throughout Nevada. At least five, yeah. All throughout Nevada. Well, Not I, in I Las think, Vegas, yeah. everybody. So, I think Mr. Hunter, the go through Yeah, the mall. listen the mall. to the legalities. Just because you visit Vegas. Does not mean prostitution? It's not leaving is Las legal. Vegas. Yes, if you've seen that movie. Listen to episode fifty. Uh, Mr. Richard Hunter will explain or, all or the legalities of how to pick up a prostitute and have a party in Vegas safely, legally. Uh, check that out for all the rules and right. regulations. Right. It's like a game of dodgeball. Rules a and game regulations. of dodgeball. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. I didn't play much dodgeball as a kid, so I'm not really... And, you know, guys, we always talk about uh, when we visit places, shops, restaurants, bars, we, we, hotel, we like to give patronage. We like to buy. We like to shop. We like to have a good time. Uh, is it safe to say this was no different? Yes, we bought a lot of booze. We did buy booze, and that's yeah, all I'm going to say. What happened about this? And it wasn't made out of lube, which I was fearing it might be. <laughs> as, as soon as we landed, we got into Vegas. 
we started gambling, right? We did gamble. Oh, we you drank. Guys did. We That's ate. Right. Yeah. We we David we Fremont Street to pry him out of the slots. And then, uh, I threw $100 on what? On red? You oh, did. yeah. Oh, you right. won. That's I doubled right. my money. And we walked and out. I, yeah, I stopped. I gave Dave 20 bucks. I'm like, here you go. I bought you guys a drink. Yes, you did. And the rest of the money, we drank. Drank. At cat house i can't okay. we did we drank a lot of the cat house yeah i thought it was a that, trick that's, question that's what we drank everywhere all of those dildos <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah but that was for your butt and you know <laughs> so the cat house was a great time uh thank they were pushing you that very book, much too, that uh biography by the guy right dennis hoff yeah it was a book right that was like on something, the shelves everywhere happened. right uh, i don't remember i remember there's a book there i do remember saying that we'll give discounts Right, yeah, <laughs> which that. is not official. Right, <laughs> so, so they're going to ask for it. Scratch that one. Right, you can mention on anyway. I, I don't want Dennis Hoff at my front door. Right, he's yeah, like dude. he's not fly all the way over here. Big dude. Right. Remember that thing on the on the fridge that you wanted to take? <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me. Remind that me. wasn't tapioca. <laughs> no, like no. we're like, oh man, that'd be cool to have that. No, it's like girls. Like, uh, like there was like a sign, like something like uh, oh oh. Uh, I thought you were kidding. There's no, the right. Something so, in the I mean, we're, no, but, but so it, where we where we interviewed Richard and the, and Leilani and and Taylor Gates, we were in the kitchen of yeah. the the the, right. the whorehouse, and, 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 right? Yeah, and he, so, and he was telling how the the girls it's like what to do, and it was signed by him. Yeah, are you talking about the magnets on the fridge? Yeah, all the words. Yeah. So they had these words. Really? It was like, a, I don't know, hundreds of words, little phrases. Oh, I got it. I've seen them. That they houses. would rearrange into right. sentences. Right, right. And, you know, it was like, who could take the biggest dick? Or Okay. No, like, no, no. This was a... This was no, a, the note that said, like, don't like, like, don't... Something about, like... Like, don't, don't eat other girls' food or, like, you yeah. got to ask, you know, before uh, you cook. Good point, that. good point. And then it so, was signed by Dennis. We're like, we're like, oh, my God, he signed it. Look I should have taken it for my autographs. We talked about it. Well, we Dennis came. did invite us to the other yeah. brothel he owned. Because we're good citizens. Up at, uh, I think it was at the actual Bunny Ranch, the one that's on HBO. Yeah. The first but one? we were headed to Rhyolite, mm-hmm. which we're going to finish this episode with. Right. And uh, it was no, nearby. It was, like, it was, like, 45 minutes away or something. Right? Because, yes, because we were supposed to interview Dennis. Dennis Hoff himself. Right. And they invited us to where he was, but we were on schedule for Rhylite, which yeah. wound up being less than a half hour from right. the Right. It was cool, cat though. House. I, I, I really yeah. liked going there. So, good. Anything else you would say about the cat house before we take a break? Oh, yeah, we should take a break. That's right. We yeah, had to take a break. I don't know, man. <laughs> at first, I was kind of nervous. I didn't know what we were going to get into. I didn't, I didn't know either, if it was going to fit or, you know. And That's every time I'm in a car with you guys, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Well, I'm I didn't doing. know if some big Goomba was going to come out and just crack our heads and we'd disappear in the Goomba. desert or something. But mm. it was a very classy, yeah. efficiently run, safe, I didn't yeah. legal see, I didn't see a bouncer place like that, right? to fuck is what it is. Yeah. Very cool. Well, there was no bouncer there. Th- this, saw, this, 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 that woman. That woman oh, okay. acted we'll as her bounce. Oh, but no, remember, not, guys, remember, I'm not if, saying she's if never. anything goes south at any of Dennis Hoff's cat house, they could call the police. Yeah. That's one of the positives about going to unaf- a, a, a licensed right. brothel. Right. And the restaurant. You're right. safe. That restaurant, the gas station, everything, he owned all that. It was all connected. I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember if yes. he owned the gas station and the yes. restaurant. But no, I don't know about they, that either, No, but maybe. It was his. Did they say that? Yes, I, I know that. I mean, I believe it. 100%. Oh, wow. Yeah. But the one across the street, remember, we sat there to piss before we got in it? Yeah. And they're like, oh, where are you guys headed? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to the brothel. <laughs> you bet. Like, yeah, they're all like, they were like, all we're pissed like psychos. Us. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, that was great. Joe, you are the musician of this podcast. We are finally going to start using some of your music. Mm-hmm. Did for, you say magician? Uh, I, I heard magician too. Yeah, did I say? I did said not magician. say magician. You're like magician. Oh, dude, yeah, you I'm, say you, I'm no, drunk. You're you slurring. You drunk uh, I'm not slurring. Am I? You're slurring a little bit. Listeners, am I you're slurring? Sound like me, Jay. Contact at Chicago Ghost Podcast. Send me a twit, twit, tweet. So let me damn know if paranormal. I, let me know if I'm slurring my words. <laughs> so slurring. damn paranormal. Or, if, or or just send it on Twitter at Chicago Ghosts. Paranormal, damn so. We'll be back right after this with episode. 51.
and we are back. Listeners, what did you think of that original music from Mr. Joe Erie, our musician? Joe, what kind of uh what kind of music is that? What kind of music do you produce? Well, first off, I want to say it's so damn paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And second off, what kind of music is it? It's I love it. Well, I like that it. Was, uh, it's that was so jam- ambient and creepy. Yeah, that that was me jamming with my friend John Maloof. Um, was that the guy who did the Vivian Meyer documentary? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. We, um, I mean, we we pretty much wrote that within like thirty forty minutes, just just jamming, just messing around. I mean, that's not even you know. But uh, I play with. Uh, this guy will. You guys will hear a bunch of stuff coming up. Yeah, we're going to be doing all original music, I think, from here yeah. on out. Yeah, but it, it's kind of um, like growing up. Like I, I was real. I, I was in a lot of like like horror movies, man. Especially like eighties horror movies, and uh, I always wanted to make the background music for horror films. I just loved it, just because it's so like ambient it's so like spontaneous just all over the place and i i just i like layering and just you know making weird noises but um there's that there's the 80s horror movie aspect in it it's uh there's a lot of pop my dad was in the beatles so i grew up with like a lot of like he wasn't wait, 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 wait. he wasn't in the beatles no, he no, was he, he was beat. really into the Beatles. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't hear the into big yeah. difference. So like huge. you know like he 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 bought he was me a fifth bass. huge <laughs> huge <laughs> yeah, he huge. bought me a bass as a kid you know because Paul McCartney and blah 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 I love the Beatles but uh, a lot of my dad's friends I mean they're they're like hardcore like just like fucking like hippies like you know a lot of drugs and psychedelic stuff they got me into like a lot of like ambient stuff you they're know? so hardcore they beat up for um, peace. But, I like. Uh, uh, I personally like ambient music that makes you go to sleep real fast. <laughs> yeah. But Joe, I mean, I think that uh, I, I'm really excited to be using your own no, your thanks. own music for this podcast. He's just really yeah. excited to I, put things on YouTube like, now. I, 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 gr- I yeah, grow- they won't demonetize me now on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I, I started off in like a punk band, then we got in like you know metal, and then that's how we first met. You played a punk show at my my. Yeah, party. Like Remember the I love party. ghosts? Yeah. Like, yeah, the base case. We've told that like, story. You like the you walking like trilogy Me for too. the um, decline of the Western. But I was always in Nine Inch Nails, man. Like it's like uh, I think Nine Inch Nails is like my it. favorite band. Or Trent Reznor. Copy but. of a copy of a copy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like I, I I I would oh and then and then pop electronic. But yeah, I, I would say it's a cla- uh, it's a cross between eighties horror music. Industrial, pop, um, and Jewish klezmer music. <laughs> yeah, maybe a, during a brisk. <laughs> a brisk, like the iced tea, a bris- or like a brisk. No, a brisk, brisk. iced tea. Bris- I think oh. you meant. I think you meant a. Yeah, I don't know what. He Wait, meant. Well, what is that? I don't know. Are, but it, aren't they called brisk? I think it's brisk. Brisk. That's where they came up with the iced tea, from, right? All right, it's guys. A brisk with no K. <laughs> Focus, the animals. The brisk. <laughs> well, but it's great. Thank you for lending that ever, to our podcast. You ever drink tea while you're cutting off a baby's penis? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> All right, now that's weird. It's, no, it's that's that what a brisk is. It is not three thirty in the morning. A brisk is. Is it really three thirty in the morning? It is three thirty in the morning. Holy shit! Three twenty thirty. I am way too drunk. And way too late. No way. All right, so thank you for the music, Enough listeners. Different. Another thing I'm really excited about. How is much longer do we have to do this? We are now on <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Guys, did you Stop know we're on now. Patreon? Who knows what Patreon is? I don't know what that Can we is. Explain this uh, again. I it's do. kind of like a brist. <laughs> no, with a tea. it has nothing to do with a brist. I thought it was just brist. So we are on Patreon, listeners. Patreon.com slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. All one word. Patreon.com slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. All one word. And if you join our Patreon community. But you and, have to include. Uh, all one word. You words. donate to the cause. Uh, there's a lot of special content available just for our Patreons, including uh, hand-delivered, autographed pictures of actual ghosts. I mean, we're not going to be hand- – I mean, it'll be hand-delivered by somebody. By snail us. mail. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, hand-signed pictures of actual ghosts, photos that have been on television, trace, been trace in energy. newspapers, uh, well, in um, books. Well, like rub everything on their armpits, get our scent hey, in if there. They, if they, if they join our community, I will do whatever. 
It's what do like you mean those, community? It's like those panties, you know, when our Patreon for sale. community. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other community. <laughs> Not that you, community. You didn't bust into that yet. No Patreon.com, whack Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast. Get hand signed photographs of actual ghosts. Get your, your name, your website uh, mentioned on our podcast. You could control our podcast for three episodes if you join the Patreon community. You want a certain subject reach, researched, visited, and talked about on this show, uh, dedicated to you, join our Patreon community. Patreon.com, whack Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. And there's a lot more, too. A lot more bonuses. What do you guys think? You excited about that? I'm excited about that. What did you tell them about our, our other sponsors? I'm excited if we get money like off this. Like Brisk Iced Tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have other sponsors. It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, GoDaddy. Right now, GoDaddy how, is giving how, a how is whopping 30% discount <laughs> on any new GoDaddy service. I wasn't asking that. If our listeners visit trygodaddy.com. Listeners, I didn't prompt them to do Slash SOS dash radio. I was 30% discount, asking. Oscar. I was genuinely asking for money, listeners. I didn't prompt them to do this. <laughs> 30% di- that's a good discount. For GoDaddy? For GoDaddy. Trygodaddy.com slash SOS dash radio. Sounds like a, like a safe word. <laughs> it could be a safe word. Right? <laughs> and finally, finally, the last thing I want to mention before we move on in the Nevada... Uh, uh, behind the scenes is shop through our Amazon page. All right, we have this is awesome actually because um, the holidays are coming up. The holidays I've seen this work before with other uh, podcasts or uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, it works really well. Um, all you gotta do is uh, put the tab of, uh, of our Amazon dot com thing. They don't charge you anything. We Nothing. just get a kickback, Nothing. like a few pennies. It costs of listeners, everything you buy. That's right. And the more shit you buy, the more we get. It costs Believe it or not, it amounts nothing. to something pretty cool. So right now, if they go to sos-radio.com, uh, I know we're switching websites to chicagoghostpodcast.com. And you have to include all one word, but dash, right now, all one word. Yes, sos-radio is still up and running. If they go to sos-radio.com and uh, they pull up the little hidden section there of our website right on our homepage, they'll see an Amazon link. If they go to that Amazon link and they shop through that link, click on the click on the button, bookmark the link. Yep. I mean shop. Black Friday's coming up guys. We uh, get everyone money for you doing it's, that. It's 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 a small thing you do now and it'll help us out for free. Literally it's the best way you can support us other than iTunes. That's right. <laughs> Leave us an iTunes <laughs> subscription. I'm glad you mentioned that, Oscar, because I really I didn't like you again. This is just me talking. You know, I really like iTunes. Uh, Oscar, do you like iTunes? No, I hate them. They don't do their own like. Uh, <laughs> they don't. They don't do their own like searches and um, how many hits we get. For example, we have to find that out. Right, simply. but I we need kind of we need ratings. Ratings help people find us. Yeah, if you and have any I, extra ratings, give me some. I right. made a commitment. I made a commitment to you guys off air. That uh, if I read a listener's, if I le- le- read a listener's iTunes rating on the air, we're going to send them something cool. So right now on iTunes, we have a fossilized. Turd. <laughs> <laughs> we have a review from Danielle Nielsen. Yeah, Danielle Nielsen says, "Drop everything you are doing and subscribe and listen to SOS Dash Radio." Jason Knight and company are absolutely brilliant. Their theories and stories are haunting and will make you think about what is actually around you. Can't wait to hear more. Five stars. Can't wait. Danielle Nielsen, we're going to send you something cool. It's probably going to be a t-shirt. I'm not sure what it's going to be It'll yet. It'll be a Nielsen rating machine. But you're it's, getting it's something. It's going to be a Dave Black autograph. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners, leave us uh, not only don't shop, not, not only shop through our Amazon link but make sure and leave us a rating on iTunes if we read your rating on iTunes we'll send you something cool Danielle Nielsen thank you very much for the five star rating and watch for something pretty pretty uh, from the Supernatural Current Studies podcast cool Uh, are we done with the house cleaning Uh, we're done with house cleaning for now yeah we got GoDaddy, we got Patreon, we got please leave us ratings on Can iTunes. Can I just mention my thing Basically now? begging for ratings on iTunes. Should I just go with mine now, get it over with? Yeah, absolutely. Plug it. Guys, do it. There's a movie podcast out there called what? Another Movie Podcast. Another Movie Podcast. That's right. You don't have to ask. You know what it is. Such a little faker. I want genuine shit here, guys. So um, we're a bi-weekly show hosted with my brother and a good friend of mine, Luke. Sometimes with Lexi. Am um, I supposed to do one? You're supposed to do the leftovers with me. 
And you're gonna do it. So long. We're gonna cover every season. You're gonna rewatch. I don't care. We're gonna do a special show on the Damn. leftovers. I want to do that. And you're the only person I know that can speak intelligently about it. Please help me. <laughs> that I know anyway. Salute. I'll drink Salute. to that. Yeah, please. It's hard, and I love that show. And no one wants to talk about it with me. <laughs> Oh um, anyway, so can I do one with uh, um, oh, here Daddy's comes. Home? No. Yeah, I'll watch it with you. Sure. Daddy's Home too. I never w- would see that movie otherwise. We don't I even know. have to I see the of, first one. What do you guys think of Rampage with The Rock? I don't know that one. I think he looks hot. I want to see it, dude. I totally want to see it. What, what, what do you mean, Rampage? Rampage? Remember the old eighties arcade game? Rampage? Oh, that was my yeah, favorite video game. Th- me too. Are you serious? Yeah. It's coming was, out as I was a movie. Gonna joke around and be like, "Is it the, the, the arcade it's the game?" The Rock. Are you serious? I swear to God, Wait, Oscar. The Rock he's doing that and Jumanji. Oscar, tell us about your podcast, please. So yeah, we very simple. We do three new or newish films. Right now, our latest show includes Justice League. And a heist um, movie called Good Time, which I uh, oh, like a lot. Oh, yeah! I've no, heard mixed this? Justice League. I heard film? mixed yeah, reviews on Justice League. I oh, just I'm sure it's like Luke picked that one. I would have picked something else, but uh, we all give him shit for that. Yeah. But yeah, he likes DC. He likes superhero movies. We reviewed Thor a couple weeks back, and that was really fun. Ragnarok. You saw it? No. Hilarious. It's really funny. Is it good? Really good. Punisher's out on Netflix. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Gotta see it. Punisher is a sex toy, right? <laughs> like the horse <laughs> and uh, if you are into that kind of shtick please follow me on another movie podcast dot com or no another movie podcast is the name of the show other podcast dot com is the website gotta get it right Oscar if you're gonna do it to try it again now go other podcast dot com right Question other mark? podcast dot com that's right Oscar I'm not you Jay I can't do it as good as you. You as well. do all of our editing all of our mixing right you make us sound as good as you can which is not saying much. <laughs> Are you available for hire? Oh, this isn't. Yeah, I haven't talked oh, about yeah, this. Oh, yeah, I put. I, th- I, I say twenty. Yeah, bucks. I would highly recommend yeah. hire. So the interesting Oscar thing about to editing edit your shit. and it's the hot new thing. Well, not hot new thing. It's been new. For, it's been a while for a while, but it's getting more traction. Believe it or not, and uh, the wonderful, the wonderful thing about it is that um, editors are easy to come by, and. Uh, I am here available to offer those services to anyone, entrepreneurs, uh, starting ups, startups, whatever. They're 18 called. and over, right? And 18 and over only. Um, and you're from Canada. And they can pay you in deviled eggs, right? In deviled eggs, exactly. Double D What about only? Bitcoin? Right. And uh, all, all this is correct, guys. Um, and metric only, not you know, the measurements. Um, yeah. What about and it's, uh You know what? Editing is absolutely the worst part. It, most people get down on casting and podcasting. Everyone's like, oh, I have the opinions. I have the voice. I have my buddies. No. You need the equipment. You need everything. We're figuring it out as we go along. I've been doing it for five plus years. And um, we do sound better, I'll tell you that, than my first year. The first year was terrible. But I learned everything that, so you guys don't have to. How would they get a hold of you for editing uh, services? Great thing about that is that you can go to the website I just gave you, otherpodcast.com. All the contact info for that, it goes directly to me. So you can so go on there. Otherpodcast.com? Uh, right. I can give you the email right now, too, but just in case people can go on the website if they want to produce it. Or their, if they – go ahead. Yeah, yeah it's give uh, us podmoviecast email. at gmail.com. Podmoviecast at gmail.com, or you can get a hold of Oscar at – Contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast dot com. Right you, through here, it might be a little better for them because right? they have it on their show notes and stuff. Right. Good. That's cool. Thank you. Moving along, episode fifty one, dial five one for Galaxy Operator. Finally, a title. I left the title that you created. So. Go Jay, ahead, give tell the, the story. Inside base. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Now fucking you do it. I'm done. I'm drinking Ukrainian cognac right now. Oh, so really? give me some. Whenever. Oscar does our editing. I send him a file. I send him multiple files and things he's got to work with. Poor guy. And I tell him what the episode title is going to be. Oscar always files ba- fires back with a completed episode, all editing included, with a new title. <laughs> kitschy, That's a pun, like a pun title. A, a pun title, right. a kitschy title, a fun title. And I never use them. I really uh, like the episode 50 title. The, which Vixens. one was Desert Vixens, episode on, 50. On, yeah, on. I called it uh, X-rated live from Dennis Hoff's Alien Cat House. Okay, listen. Only which because, one's better? Come on, guys. Only because I thought search engines would find Dennis Hoff Cat Fucking House. Fucking out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Dial 5-1 for Galaxy Operator for episode 51, that one really worked. I well, I just it. saw my cover of Dial M for Murder, and I just got it from there. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it yeah. works. Uh, Dow 5-1 for Galaxy Operator, episode 51. Let's go behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Listeners, you can see photos uh, from this particular trip to Area 51 back gate, the absolute closest a civilian could get to, to the top secret Area 51 in Nevada, uh, and also the infamous black mailbox. A black mailbox on E.T. Highway. That's the subjects that were covered in right. this particular episode. So uh, go to sos-radio.com, photos and videos, to see videos and photos from this particular excursion. Um, we did do a, uh entire E.T. Highway trip in under six seconds. Time lapse video, right? That you can see on, e- Took way on longer, uh, YouTube. Though. It was awesome. Yeah, it's it's. I think that I think that was a minute long. It was under six seconds. The the ET highway one when we minutes? did the whole ET. Yeah, highway I thought one, that was longer for sure. It was, was it? Yeah. The the up to the gate it was, was six seconds. Longer than oh, maybe that was up to the gate. Yeah, exactly. thank you for clarifying. I was say, man, must have been over. But either way, check it out on YouTube. Chicago's own supernatural current studies on YouTube. So Area Fifty One back gate. This is. This is the closest, guys, anyone could get to. Mm-hmm. It's funny. There's to a, Area 51. There's the, a, there's a the government, t- like basically a branch of the government that's devoted to the supernatural, and we worry that it doesn't exist. Really, yeah. guys? Well, it Come certainly on. exists because we were there. Right. There's so the no Area 51. That it is I'm just riling up the listeners. You know, uh, it's your first scully. day here. So, first Test of all, flying secret there, aircraft. There was only one time I was like kind of scared or nervous or felt like a little. Concerned. That's right. Why? Huh? Last Why? Night. We'll Where? talk about that later. All right. So, well, to, that's because I was sleeping in Dave's room. <laughs> to get to Area 51 back gate, you got to travel 10 miles off of ET Highway, literally into the middle of nowhere. And most of those 10 miles, it's like driving off road. Bumpy. Um, it, it's not paved. It's it's not really taken care of. A few times I was nervous for the rental car uh, because oh, yeah, it, it's were. all off road. You don't know if you're going in the right direction, so you're basically traveling eight plus or nine miles, not knowing if you're going in the right direction. Right in this unpaved, bumpy, hazardous ass road. Um, Jackrabbit filled. If, oh, the jackrabbits. The suicidal Bro. jackrabbits. We could do a show on the jackrabbits alone. Jesus Christ. How many times those jackrabbits almost killed Let us? Let alone, uh, we just got done talking to Ken, and he was telling us the crazy stuff that actually goes on over there. Right. The all, the, all the deterrent equipment, mm-hmm. the, the security, the video, the audio, the, uh, the, nerve, uh, the nervous system uh, interrupting equipment that's out there, the, the sensors, the ammonia sensors. So you travel almost nine miles, not knowing if you're going in the right direction, and it's completely backwards ass off road. Then you hit, finally hit a blacktop surface, and you know now we're getting in the right area. And in, in, in which we saw the other countries, you know, like playing games. Because uh, you want me to explain a little bit about that? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, please. Bro, I don't know either. Was I there for this one? Well, yeah. So, like, okay, like, so, so, like, they have like, uh, what was it? Remember, like, the black flag, white flag, green flag, whatever. Oh, the hit. exercises with the yeah. with the, with the and, aircraft. And on the way up there, yeah. we saw the planes going, chasing each other. That's right. When we were recording the Alien, little Alien episode, they yeah. were doing the dog fights. So, and, and, and Ken was, he's like, yeah, dude. Like, actually, a bunch of people, they're like, oh, yeah. Like, they'll have, like, people from Russia, like, playing games with, like, the U.S. That's or, right. Like, You're you right. Know, You're right. You, yeah. So, it's like all these different countries, like, like Britain and the United States, it's like they've they they play games with each they other. They practice They're, basically. Yeah. Okay. Fighter jets. Humans are doing it. Who's to say that aliens aren't doing that with you know, well, us. Well, it's you interesting you mention that because and again, listeners can go to YouTube and see this. Uh it's a video called UFO caught while traveling the road to Area 51 back gate. Pithy. We recorded a time lapse video of that trip off of ET Highway back to Area 51 back gate. Um, Dave recorded it, actually, Dave Black. And there's this very odd anomaly that suddenly that's appears. Funny. I still say that's just uh, light refraction. Because I've, I've, that that, I've gotten that on several different yeah, videos. Yeah, but that thing shoots, it comes out of nowhere, and then it shoots over the mountaintops. 
it, it, it almost leaves it, it leaves the windshield of our car and goes it zooms over the mountaintops. Being a time lapse video, time lapse video, I think had to be moving extremely quickly. I don't know what it was. Listeners, check it out on YouTube. Let us know what you think it was, but it's odd. Kind of like Dave. Dave Odd. Right. Uh, his com- comedy name. What did you guys think of the back gate of Area 51? I mean, there we were, standing. It was pretty cool to be there. I wish we would have gone up to some of the other gates, but we couldn't find them. We um, tried. But I, I I wanted to take more pictures, but all the signs say, do not take pictures. And I had these this image of like... A bunch of guys rushing us and smashing our cell phones. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Every, all the footage we went to capture. Yeah. I mean, all right. I, I really thought, like, if we got up to there, which I didn't think we were actually going to get that close. I never... How my, cool was that? I can't believe it happened. You know? <laughs> we were like, actually there. Okay, we were there, and I'm like, holy shit. No one stopped us. I kind of, like, I wonder what would happen if we went a little further. I mean, like, we pretty much were touching it. I was like inches away from like. I mean, it's like being in the, in the front, you know, yeah, of the, the front the, row of the concert. You're not going to play the instruments, but you, that's the farthest we could go. That's where the bounces are. But I mean, everything I've seen and this and that, I'm like, I kind of didn't want to test the waters. We got we got further than most. I I don't know. I would think most people or things I've seen. I mean, we were there at Area 51. I mean, I mean we I, could honestly say we were at. Area 51. We were, but mo- most we were at that, their checkpoint. Most things that I've seen where people got that close, they were stopped way before they got there. Wow! By right, I mean, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, we have photos to prove it. Yeah, check out the website, listeners. You'll see the back gate. There were outbuildings. It's like uh, a big security gate, barbed wire, video yeah. cameras. I, I, I like the idea. There's like a. Like their own Hogwarts in there, like um, so. There's like mountains surrounding the area, right? Where right. they have the middle, like completely, you can't see anything, and satellites obviously can't see, like show anything to the public or whatever. So I like the idea that there's like a whole school of people being trained for God knows what. God knows. Probably what. like with strange artifacts or like uh, aircraft, you know, aircrafts yeah. that they mentioned that they aircraft. made up or invented. And I just have this, uh, it's just really cool, like, you know, I don't know, do, is that where they train um, sleeper cells how to learn Russian or something? Or is that where they, you know, there's a lot of things there. No one really knows. It's kind of cool to think about it that way. All we know are the rumors. I believe it's just a corn dog factory. Um, you know what? The uh, Twinkie factory, really. What are some of the rumors corn. that come out of there, guys? I mean, that they have actual physical aliens. Well, shit. Like- they have alien craft. They have reversed engineered U.S. aircraft. That's the basic stuff. Like, um, like it kind of blew my mind. The shit well, that he was that's a good about. point. This all ties into things Ken was talking and, and about. And I'm, I'm just like, wow. Like the ba- basically, like the stuff that we know about and we hear about, it was like that's nothing compared to what Ken was talking about. Mm. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, for for an example, how how many exercises do we see the government? You know. Um, playing game like war games and this and that with other countries for practice in the sky. You're right. You're right. This could be an area where we play war games and practices with extraterrestrials oh, and experimental man. things. I mean, we saw a drone airstrip too. Right? Oh, we You're saw right. a lot of things we didn't get There's into. There's so yet. much stuff in the desert, guys. So much stuff out there. Um, I don't know. I was really excited to be standing there, Joe. You walked out of the car uh, because if listeners heard that episode. Um, I had to kind of do hit and runs with recording because it was so windy out there in the middle of nowhere. Right. Because you're literally in the middle of nowhere. Right. Uh, no cell phone signal, No nothing. Uh, it was so windy. I, I think had I got to, the entire trip, honestly. <laughs> yeah. For most of it, anyway. I had to go out, experience, jump back into the car, record to, to minimize the wind and the interference. Uh, you got out of the car at one point, and you had your hands either in your pockets or behind your back. And I said, Joe. Oh yeah, you're like, don't stop your hands because open. Let they them might think see. you have a weapon, right? Yeah, because um, they call. All right, so ba- all right, so supposedly there is these guys. They call them camo dudes. Where I, you, I don't you, think they call them camo dudes. No, that's their technical. They really they do. Online, that's what they call them, the yeah. camo dudes. So they're they're guys just kind of like hidden, like with cam all over them, like they're sniping in, in case anybody does something bad. But so well, we're also wondering that they were like long range listening in because we're approaching with the only thing they can see right. from like 
a vast distance away. And so we were like saying in the car, like, hey, guys, we're just here to podcast. We're not doing anything weird. That's right. We kept saying that out loud. Hopefully yeah. they can hear us. You're right. And no Oscar. one said anything. We we're harmless. That's probably there was no guards there because they knew we were coming. Like, ah, they're just fucking tourists. Idiots. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. I, I have a theory. So, But Oscar brings up a good point. I mean, that's one of the what's, that's what they say. Part of the deterrent technology is they could hear into the cab of your vehicle. And which kind of was getting into the, the, the by by the the smell the piss like the, you could tell the ammonia of off your body the exactly. sweat yeah because you're like oh how do you know it's not an antelope or how do you know it's not like a, apparently they knew my credit score before I did <laughs> I have a I have a theory was it what is it well these camo dudes it's it's a, it's a I'm I, I'm not saying a lot of militaries men but I'm. Camo, camo dudettes. Yeah. L- l- <laughs> and dudes. There, pro- there probably is a lot of guys out there that have been out there for a long time, and they're getting a little lonely. They saw Dave come through, and they're like, this is one handsome man. And they <laughs> Stop let it. us just go through as far as they could just so they could sniff him. You know, it's interesting that you said that these dudes are out there for a very long time. Yeah. Um, when we were staying at the Sunset View Inn in Alamo... Um, which I highly recommend visitors who are out in Nevada doing what we do, stay at the the Sunset View Inn. Great people, great place. Um, There was a customer that came in because there's a liquor store attached to the hotel. Which husband, yes. And her husband, this this customer's husband, uh, she said, works at Area 51. And these people sign contracts knowing that they cannot either leave the facility, they actually live at the facility, they do not uh, interact with the public, their contract is for life, um, up until they physically cannot work, they work at Area 51, they do, not inter- they do not interact with the public, they do not go anywhere, they live at Area 51, they work at Area 51, everything they do, live, breathe, eat, is Area 51. So maybe these camo dudes are the same exact thing. And she did, uh, uh, not not lie detector, but um, yeah, they're subject to lie detector tests. Oh right yeah, now. oh the the screening is. The, I mean, we what all she know about that, but she's like, no, incredible. She's like, yeah, they do it. So we were there, guys. I mean, who gets, I mean, who gets to say? If it takes a year. And tons of paperwork and fingerprints and, you know, clarification and validation just to get into the TSA? <laughs> yeah. Bro. <laughs> Good point. I applied, uh, I semi-applied. I did just an overloading amount of paperwork and application stuff. For TSA? Didn't, no, this is for something else. Uh, for a DA uh, desk clerk type oh, of job. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't even, couldn't even finish it. I'm like, oh, my God. I can't <laughs> I get all this, this information it's about me. It's not worth it. <laughs> I can't, they can't know everything about me. So who knows what's yeah. going on out there, man? But we were right there, front right, and center. My, the, the, the craziest moment for me, like where the happiest moment, I think, where I wish we could have stayed there forever, was when we were in the middle of the desert at Area Fifty One. Yeah, at the back gate. Not at the back. Well, not at, uh, that was awesome. But I'm just, but on the highway. Okay, so that's going to segue into the black mailbox portion of this episode. Uh, okay, because oh, I have a lot to say. So, about guys, this. with the with the black with the Area 51 back gate, we came, we saw, we conquered. Nothing uh, nefarious happened. Nothing crazy. Uh, I would love to have gotten. We didn't past. Even see any other people on that road. We did not. We didn't see a single guard. We didn't see a gun. All we saw was a lot of security. Yeah. Um, Flash forward to the nighttime, right? We hung out at the black mailbox, the notorious black mailbox, yes. where people have uh, experienced many, many, countless UFO sightings from this particular... And a misspelling of a certain website that we used to have. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Huh. So um. the black mailbox, uh, notorious location on ET Highway, uh, where numerous, countless reports of uh, UFO activity have been witnessed. Uh, we went there. It's been reduced to basically rubble now, today. Uh, it's just a pile of junk, tchotchke bullshit. I didn't feel anything from there. No, I didn't yeah. feel anything there, but uh, we hung out there. I got a lot night. of cock photos. So that's uh, <laughs> something we're going to talk about. Um, 
He means rooster people. No, rooster. no. Let's talk about male penis. No, no penis. roosters. And, and okay. na- n- naked men cooking food and showing their penis. Up. All right. My so, favorite part right. about that whole thing is that photos. you saw a letter written by a wife of somebody who died. A husband. Uh, what, remember that one? Man, you read it on the on the show though. On so the show, on listeners. It was so cool. I mean, I mean, that's sad, what podcasting cool. is about. That's some, that's, so that's at the black everything. mailbox, as I said. It's been reduced to rubble. There's tchotchkes. There's bullshit. There's mannequin heads. There's, uh, you know, construction horses broken apart, uh, just kind of laying haphazardly. Um, bottles and and what else was there? Broken glass. Just, it's not what it used to be. Um, no. So we went there. We hung out there at night. And and then we left. And after we left. Dave starts showing us photos of, hey, look what I wrote on this rock. So when we were at the black mailbox, there is actually a mailbox there laying on the ground. People leave notes, um, letters of sentiment inside that box. One of the letters, as Oscar mentioned, was a a heartfelt uh, message left by a woman. I believe she was from the U.K. somewhere. I don't think she was from the U.S. Right. Right. Uh, about her her deceased husband, how he believed in aliens, and you know, I like hope she'll meet him up there. Or I hope he's, he's with, with the aliens right, right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and it was just just excellent. What a great letter! Listen back to the episode. I read it word for really word. Really hope that isn't a fake. But we have a comedian on our crew, and Dave Black wrote uh, myself and Joe Erie's names <laughs> and phone <laughs> numbers. Uh, on pieces of paper asshole. and put them in the black mailbox. Oh, no, this, I wrote them on rocks. On, oh, they were on rocks. They were, were Excuse on rocks. me. More everlasting. Yeah. Right. Uh, he told uh, people who visit this place, uh, the black mailbox, to send dick pics to Joe. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he wrote that Jay, loves, Jay Knight loves soup. French onion. French onion soup. I didn't yeah. say specifically French onion. I just said send pictures of soup. So... Yeah. Okay, so this this asshole <laughs> uh, leaves these messages on rocks. We have the experiences at the black mailbox. You can hear what happens in the actual episode itself, including what happened the night before this particular recording, things we saw in the sky, uh, which are still up for debate. I, I argue it was a UFO. But it was a star. It was still there. We'll we see what away. it was. The maneuvers it was making was not star-like. That but was my favorite part. Stand the joke. That was, that, joke. Honestly, that was, that was one of my favorite parts of the Let's let the listeners they leave that both. to themselves. Oscar did a great editing uh, job cutting in that clip to this particular episode. But... I was on cocaine. Dave left our, our contact info. Uh, yep. Names and phone numbers at the black mailbox. Come uh, weeks later. It was weeks later, too. Dude, it was like you know a while what? later. It I, really was. I showed Annette pictures. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is pictures of the trip. And she's like, uh, and, and I even showed her. I'm like, look what fucking Dave put on a rock. <laughs> Did Joe- My name's Joe. Send me dick pics. My phone number. She's like, hey, hey, hey. So, Joe, what kind of pictures did you receive? Because I'll tell you my Dude, story. I had fucking dick pics where I had to say, I had two messages, page one and two, because it was so big. And it. And oh, she didn't, at, at, first, at, at, at first, she didn't, you know, like she was like, oh, she's like, Dave's stupid. Uh, and then a week later, after I started getting pics of fucking dicks, she's like, are you fucking serious? I'm going to start having my friends say, my name is Anetta. Like, send me vagina, or like, whatever. You know, it's like, well, how would you like it if my friends did this? Or, oh, my, your wife got oh, involved. Oh my God, <laughs> That's a whole other animal. F- oh. It was horrible. I feel was, bad for you. Would yeah, you really be that horrible. upset if your wife was getting pictures of vaginas from other women? No. No. <laughs> so Joe really got <laughs> pictures of dicks. Uh, some guy buck ass naked with a huge cock yeah, cooking right. on circumcised penises. Now were these people's actual pictures? Or are they just sending you random? No, pictures it was from a, the, dude. It, it was are they the, random pictures from the internet or like are these? How would he really know? Sent? It was actually they were pictures, pictures of dicks. Of Does it matter? Well, I know, but you can tell if it's somebody. Yeah, well, dude, someone it, just. Took I mean, their all right, I'll, I'll explain in a sec. But dude, Jay, doesn't he sound kind of interested? Like he wants to know in detail. <laughs> yeah, he really I'm wants just, to see. I'm your just cocks. curious if people were actually literally sending you pictures. This of their fucking dick, asshole. So why am I editing the show, Dave? You're lucky you weren't included on this nonsense. These fucking guys are sending me pictures. Thank their you, dicks from the site, and I see my that rock that you wrote it in the background. Eh? Oh, okay, good. And so I, one of the guys was uncircumcised, and he had it pierced. It was sick. We should put some of them on the Dave, website. man, Dave. Black. I, you know, we could describe the onion soup. So mine was really creepy. 
Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so uh, all the listeners know I couldn't I think travel. of anything more innocuous than send me pictures of soup. <laughs> what, why don't you say send me pictures send of your Jay, old asshole? Send <laughs> Jay pictures of soup. Jay loves Gaping. soup. So listeners know I travel a lot for my career. Uh, love my job, <laughs> but I travel a lot. Uh, it was I don't even know where the hell I was in the Midwest. I was at a hotel. Have my phone on, and I have my phone on with with sound because God forbid something happens at home. Katie, my wife calls me. Katie Knight, it goes through. I can well, pick it up right away. Sound. Right, okay. so it's it's got to be like three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm in some dump water hotel in the middle of the Midwest, and my my text message goes off, <laughs> and I roll <laughs> out of bed. I'm like, oh my God, something's going on. Because everyone knows I'm traveling. All my friends know I'm traveling. So this, this is an emergency from home, right? So in my sleep stupor i answer my phone i look at my phone and i click on my text message because i say i got a message and it's <laughs> it's, it's it's so stupid in retrospect it's well, stupid in regular respect it's this weird like creepy sp- mind you again it's like three or four in the morning i'm half asleep it's this weird spacey background with a picture of boiling over just delicious looking French onion soup. This cheese is oozing <laughs> and all the message says it's it's like Jay, I heard you love soup. <laughs> <laughs> and the first connection my fucked up mind made was some guy made cooked my family in soup. So all of a sudden I get really paranoid and really anxious and like the most rational explanation. Just yeah. crazy. I'm freaking the fuck out in the middle of a hotel. I don't know where I'm at because I'm half asleep. I think my family is cooked in fucking French onion soup. Because Dave wrote my name and number at the black mailbox. Honestly, I mean, if and you're I got gonna, like three or four more pictures of soup after that. If you were gonna, gonna make people, people into into these texts, would you guys? Oh I'm so hard. If you were gonna make people so into scared. soup, it would definitely be like a beef stew or something. I, <laughs> that's the first place my mind went. It was that's so your answer? scary, man. <laughs> you little fuck. completely the wrong kind of soup. Thank no you for one should see the French onion soup year, at four Dave, o'clock you. in the morning. Mm. Jay, I heard you like I got soup. these texts at work, and I start cracking up. All the customers <laughs> well, are like, right. what the fuck is going on? Like, this is the funniest yeah, thing ever. Because we could, not yeah. only I got dick pics, I got, like, weird mouth, like, uh, hey, Joe. Like, you just, like, look out of nowhere. <laughs> and I was like, who is that? <laughs> Who's texting you? What are, I, I don't know. Like, well, how do they know your name? Why is it a fucking, like, 697 area code? I, I don't know. Well, that just goes to show... How many people visit the black mailbox? Did you get pictures of other soup? No, it was text messages after that. Just, Uh just, no other text messages. Like hello, oh Jay, I did get them back. What the the fight? What fight? The fucking Mayweather fight. What do you mean? Huh? What? Like what? The the McGregor or the Mayweather fight? I watched it. How does this connect? I was in New Orleans. Yeah, time. because like like so so there was a big posting of like yeah everyone that was watching it like on uh um. What's uh? What the fuck was it uh, on on YouTube? You know, everyone was like trying to get in. Uh, <laughs> What's that biggest internet video channel? <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, it we're called? Drinking a little bit. Vimeo. No, I think. But, yeah, but then I, I'm I'm like my my name is Dave Gold. I like cock in my ass. And my, my, you remember I sent it? Oh, okay, here we, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So when you say we could swear, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah here we go. I'm regretting no, that Jay, a little you know, bit. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking yeah, about. I got, him, I got him good. I was in the middle of a French Quarter during the the, the Mayweather. Yeah. Uh, you saw, you saw the thing I posted for him? I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're, there we are uh, on E.T. Highway. Dave has this idea to travel down, I think it was called the Black Mailbox Road or something, that yeah. side road. Mailbox Road. Is right. Mailbox Road. And all of a sudden, we were, we were encircled by... Lights. Yes. This is my scariest moment. <sighs> it was crazy. It Dude, was. It my was. My heart dropped. Man. Hyper. I don't, it was. I don't scared at all. Paranoia. It was. What the hell is happening? All of a sudden, we're we're in the middle of nowhere, folks. You got to understand. Nothing is out here. No people. Yeah. No businesses. Nothing. It's you, all right. So 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 we're hanging out at the mailbox, and Dave's like, he's just, yeah, let's go on this thing. And we're like, yeah, 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 and like we're we're hanging out. We saw the lights, remember? That's right. And then we're like, and then Jay, you're like, dude, 
all right, fine, let's go drive on it. Let's go follow these lights. And we're like, ah. Oh, I was freaked uh, out. I was scared, man. Yeah. We decided to follow the lights then. Eh? And we're like, okay. I'm like, all right, let's do it then. So we start going. Eh? Then all of a sudden we saw the lights behind us. Yep. On the side of like, us. Oh, shit. In front of us, behind Dude, us, on the uh, side of us. It was, it, we were completely encircled by these mysterious lights. That was crazy. <laughs> Some, you know, just to to put honesty out there, some of the lights could have been tail lights from. It cars. could have been cars. It could I'm have actually, been. but I'm looking at satellite images right now. Uh, we didn't know to know this at the time, but there's actually like entire like ranches and dwellings back there. Yeah, but like five. Yeah, of but them. dude, there were like spotlights following us coming at from us all remember? sides. Yeah, from all from sides. All sides. Uh, yes. And that would appear like floating in the and sky, disappear. Dude. Yes. Multiple colors. Ugh. Dude, I was actually nervous. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, is this, like, real? Like, I mean, like, I'm, <laughs> this has to be, like, an I was, illusion, I was man. scared, man. Dude, it was in the sky, dude. And then it came down, and it started coming. The car it looked like it was speeding. It yeah. Coming towards us or whatever craft. Or, we're like, oh, shit. You said cars, but no cars ever appeared. I know. They there was the one truck that we saw. One. Disappeared. One. A single. But yet we were we encircled. Them, yeah, we found the dead snake. Yeah, and I killed the snake. I didn't mean no, it. No, 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 no that was another time. We didn't, sh- oh, geez, sh- geez, sorry, geez, Oscar, another, edit that out. Another story. <laughs> so, no. the episode 51, the dial 51 for uh, Galaxy Operator. It was an intense episode. It was a fun episode. Being at the back gates, being on ET Highway, being encircled by these mysterious lights, uh, having the picture sent to us because of Dave's shenanigans. Great time. Episode 52, live from Lil Alien, the world-famous Lil Alien, the only public facility in countless miles area around Area 51. We got to interview Connie Nash, daughter of founders Joe and Miss Pat Travis, and we actually unbelievably got the chance to interview Miss Miss Pat Travis herself. And such a sweet interview it was. What did you guys think of Lily at the end? That was really fun. That was great. You know what? Like, Not even talk about Ken, but like, I like legitimately, they were the most legitimate, like where it's just so sincere, and I believe them more than anything. In the middle of Area 51. <laughs> They were they, they were very fight. genuine in their responses and um, and just in the way they carried themselves, you know, like very no bullshit not, attitude. Yeah, it was yeah. good. I just trusted everything, like honesty, like. Um, well, what did you think of the stories Connie, the daughter, uh, was telling? Of just uh, just very sincere and honest, like no bullshit, like no it's bullshit. Like, that it's thing like, that followed them on ET Highway. Kind of, she almost she, she almost talked like us. Yeah, like, kind of like yeah, hey, she was. you know what? She was Italian. Yeah. Hey, I'm sure she still is. I have no fucking clue. Like, or it's like you know, it's like I don't. know. This is what they say. I don't know. You know, like or just, or just like this is weird. Like, I mean, it's not like a lot of a lot of people are. This happened. This is for sure. You know what? Like, it's like it, it's just. There, there. It wasn't a hundred percent. Like, this is how it is. I don't know. It was just sincere, man. That that's the only way I can say it. Yeah, because it's like you talk to like a lot. Yeah, of I do. I do Absolutely. like talking to people that have like uh like a like this is what they say, but I don't really know. Yeah, and that's like, how we it, are, you know, man. We're just yeah, exactly. It's like hey, it's what it's the people that are like this is definitely a thing, yeah. and you're like okay, come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it was great exactly. to get stories from co-owner. Yeah. Uh, growing up in the town, in the area, and they all mad being immersed in this 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 alien lore, and actually having a story, multiple mm. stories uh, of mysteriousness in the sky, and man. especially owning a a bit a place like that. Well, yeah, that's the where only. It's like, hey, I know a lot of people like say this, but I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say like this. This is what we saw, and like it, they're not trying to sell you anything. Man. You know, they're just being, like, from the heart, you know? What about uh, Miss Pat? Miss Pat, the herself. I didn't know. I had no... So, the listeners... I like her food. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, the food was great. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you're ever at the Little A, you didn't get the chili. Chili was fantastic. Um, so listeners don't know, but setting up this interview at Little Alien was really fucking hard. Um, they've been burned in the past. So the movie Paul with uh, who's in Paul? Uh, it was uh, Nick Frost and um, and uh, Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. But that's right. That, that's voiced, uh, and the alien was voiced by Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, the alien. Right. So Paul came to town to um, Rachel Nevada, and and told the, the, the producers and things. Told uh, Lil Alien they wanted to record there. It was just a small, going to be a small documentary. Turns out Paul wound up being this billion dollar movie. I don't know if it was a billion well, dollar right. Role. Well, too much Ukrainian cognac. Mm-hmm. Turned out to be this multi-million dollar movie. Like two. Uh, okay. And the little alien didn't get a piss cent of royalties for that movie. And Miss Pat's old. You know, she's, she's getting on there in age. This is her only business. There's no other business around. They screwed her basically out of a lot of money. So when I tried to set up this interview, Connie, who's kind of the spokesperson for the little alien... Um, was really reluctant. She did not want us to come in. She wanted, frankly, to pay... She wanted us to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to sit down with her, not even the the, her, the owner, Miss Pat. It was a, it was a $37.5 million movie. $37.5 million, Paul. Which they didn't not, get not, a cent. Not great. Um, <laughs> so see, we went, me and Connie, uh, when I was trying to set this up, we went round and round. Uh, she didn't want us to come in and do it. She wanted us to pay a lot of money to interview them, which I wouldn't do because we don't pay for interviews. That's not uh, that's not what journalists do. Um, so she said she was going to check us out. She has friends in Chicago, high friends in Chicago. She was going to check us out. Never got back to me. So here we are on our trip in the middle of Rachel, Nevada, in the middle of nowhere. Not knowing if we're even going to. We're just like, fuck it. Let's go in. Let's see what yeah. happens. So we get in, we ask for Connie, and it turned out she was great. And that's more of a reason for her to, you know, if they were lying about everything, it's more of a reason to bullshit about it. You know what I mean? Because they, No, they, what do you mean? If they want to make it an attraction and this and that, they didn't. They're, it's, dude, they're just genuine, just straight up. Absolutely. You know, it's like... You know what I mean? If, they, if if all they wanted to do is make it an attraction and lie and, oh, yeah, 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 and hype it up, they didn't. No, not at they all. They always stuck to the, 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 just honesty, man. Like, I I don't know. I, I Me, like, my, my personal feel, like, 100% genuine. Like, yeah. just good people, man. And think about the people that sit around that bar. That's the only watering hole. It's the only bar in 100, 100 miles. Who do they get? Everybody from everywhere. Everyone from Area 51. Well, that too. People with top secret clearance. People that don't want to be known. That's the only place they get to go to unwind. That's where we were. And then we got to interview Miss Pat, the owner herself. Not even just people to unwind, people to find out. Exactly. You know? I mean, that that's the, the place to be. Uh People interrogate like the people, mecca people, yeah, of people listen to other alien people. conspiracy. I mean, shit, they might have been listening to us. <laughs> you know, how many people were there? Well, if Ken was right, what he was saying about the surveillance, yeah, absolutely, we were being. I mean, for know, an example, we could have to. to other people. We could have been, you know, you know, like listening to other people. Like, I mean, for all the other podcasts and all, you know, like all other you know, like media and stuff that we met there that we talked to. How do you know that they're not informants from Area 51 just posing to be? Oh, man. You know what I'm saying, though? You don't know around that area. No. You just don't know. It's That's like, the oh, cool hey, part. You know, like, yeah, we're doing a news story from uh, California. We're doing a news story from uh, Texas. Uh, we're a podcast out of Pittsburgh. Uh, those people, dude. Well, it's funny because they we... Just, they they could have been working in Area 51 posing to be someone one like us. We did meet fellow podcasters. Exactly. At that's the what little I'm saying. Yeah, I, I talked to them a bunch, too. Yeah, yeah that's the, um, the paranoid strain. The paranoid strain. Uh, check him out on iTunes. The fearful Jesuit is the uh, the person we met. He's the the host of the Paranoid Strain. Yeah, check him out on iTunes. Um, had no idea we we're going to be able to interview the owner of Alien, uh, Miss Pat, and and Miss Pat, she, just such a sweet, 
innocent, uh, wholesome. The vibe of her interview was just purity. It was just, this is what we're here to do. Yeah. And she admitted that the place is haunted. The little alien is haunted. What was the name of the... Um, Archibald. Archibald. Alien. Archibald. The, f- the infamous story from the little alien. Joe, that crinkling is really loud. Uh, Archibald, late one, one winter's night, cold, snow. Miss Pat Travis and her husband, Joe, were, were, were stranded at the alien. And mind you, how bad it was weather-wise in Nevada... They only live 100 yards away. They couldn't get home. They couldn't leave. So they stayed at the alien. And uh, Archibald, this energy, this entity, entered through this thick steel back door of the restaurant that's always locked. And we stood by that door when we were interviewing Connie, which was really cool. Uh, This entity entered that door and and talked to Miss Pat Travis and her husband, Joe, and told them they need to stay open. They need to, to... to to create this location where people could congregate because they were thinking about closing the business because they were they were losing money and Archibald came in and, and convinced them to stay open and, and Miss Pat con- is convinced it's a ghost that inhabits the alien so I mean I think that was pretty profound just getting confirmation from the owner that the alien this world famous location is actually not only alien visited but haunted I don't know, did you guys catch all that? Mm-hmm. While we were there? Well, I mean, you know, obviously, like my theory, I think it's all in that same realm, you know, ghosts and aliens. I did a lot of walking around there mainly while well, you guys did most of the interviews on this one. What'd um, you think? <clears throat> I didn't feel anything, of course. I would have mentioned it uh, then or now. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was very cool. I really liked the. The effects of rain in the desert was really cool. Well, yeah, we got stuck oh. in a rainstorm. <clears throat> we did. That's what I was going to yeah. Very I short. St- I stood right out in that rain. The that was rain cool. was the rain was so hard it was horizontal. Yeah. And I just stood out there, man, and enjoyed that desert rain. Very cool man. effect. Doesn't Elvis have a song? It looks fake. Rain? No, it's Kentucky. It looked like rain. a movie kind of. Yeah. Well, actually, when we got, yeah. like, I mean, so we visited Ken, and then we went right there. I got weird for a little while. Like, I was, like, shaking. I had to take Dude, a nap Dude, you in left. Car. You left, yeah. Oh, it was. Like, what was that about? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I started getting, like, really panicky. And um, I was like almost like having like a panic attack, like it was like too much. Very strange. I'm like, dude, I you did. I went to the car, I slept for about like 20 minutes. I got up and I was so calm. Uh, I don't. I, what do you think that was? I don't know. Like, I mean, so, so, was I the I energy? I didn't sleep the night before from an alien, too much. or um, maybe I was I was feeling too much energy. Um, I don't know. I have no clue. Um, you did. You behaved very strangely. Like it's alien. like I just I I needed to like just like lay down. I was like so panicky, um, and as soon as I woke now, up, mind I was you, fine. when when we're in the alien, we're surrounded by. I mean, there's pictures of of reptilians. There's pictures of aliens. There's you know photos of Bob Lazar and and there's all these yeah. I mean alien that, that artifacts. stuff didn't mind me. Like I just I don't know if I was just like under like. I, I didn't sleep enough, but like, no. My I, first theory when that was happening to you, but it was shot down immediately this next second after I thought of it. But I'll tell you anyway, is that uh, it could be like because uh, you're more sensitive to this stuff, is that you had like a negative effect to not being bombarded constantly by radio, electricity waves, television, and stuff. Because we're out in the middle of nowhere, but that was the fourth day. I think that's what calmed me down that I wasn't. No. But no, I'm saying like you know, you know, it's like a drug. It's not. I'm saying it's it's a good thing. But you weren't used to it, you know. I'm not saying it's a good theory. I'm just saying yeah, I had that thought. Could be. But either either way, I mean, you you did ev- uh, react adversely to being at the alien at first. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, but that, then I always question too. I'm like, damn, like, what if there is like some other stuff I'm picking up on, that, you know, that's making me feel weird, uh, and. I, uh, cause normally like if I'm like panicky about stuff, if, if, like if, if I, if, if I try to calm down, I'll wake up and I'll still be panicky. I'm like, I, I need to just relax for a sec. I count, I went to sleep for about like 20 minutes 
Yeah, you were. Yeah, it was fine. No big deal. So no weird. big deal. So weird. It was so weird. Well, Dave, what did you think of the alien? It was great. I, uh, that interview we did with the owners was really great, and uh, it was it was really cool to be there and kind of be in this infamous place, you know. Yeah, and for me it was extra special because the first time I went through ET Highway with Randy Tucker from somewhere out there radio dot com, uh, I got extremely sick, and and suddenly all the uh, the rumors of these. Uh, these nervous system affecting uh, deterrent technologies became very real to me. Uh, we went happening in Cuba, <coughs> Cuba right now. Exactly. All the American dignitaries are like getting these weird sicknesses that are scrambling exactly. their brains. Exactly. That's what happened to me the first time I went through Area Fifty One. Well, dude. So I went to the little alien and I could not get an interview. So I got this. I cop this attitude like, I need to go back. There's unfinished business here on ET Highway. We need to go back. So that launched this whole Nevada extraterrestrial and ghost odyssey um so for me it was great to finally go and finish what i set out to do um and it was it was just incredible dave yeah it was really cool well just like you said uh, like it's almost like something was like messing with me to like stop well there you go there it is and then i'm like i don't give up so you were adversely affected too i'm gonna do it and it's like no matter what, like it sucks, but like okay, it is what it is, and it's gonna happen. So I lay down for a little bit, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to calm down. I'm gonna go back. I didn't, and I was fine. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Very weird. I didn't even think about that. Great. Yeah. Good. So that's some behind the scenes from episode fifty-two. Let's talk about episode fifty-three, live from Rhyolite Ghost Town. Again, listeners, go to sos-radio.com, uh, photos and videos to see pictures from Rhyolite, the 1904 decrepit gold rush town that you could still visit. Um, I think I think this one will be a pretty quick summary. Yeah, it, not a lot happened here. We didn't. I, I didn't feel Nothing. anything there really at yeah. all. Um, it was like, I mean, we got a little seeing bit... Seeing the ruins, bit, I mean... Yeah, seeing the ruins and bats flying around. That lady that was uh, buried separately from the jail place. It was yeah. Pretty, it was pretty yeah. neat to see all the stuff and see the history and whatnot, but there was really nothing paranormal going on. Joe and I climbed, like, a thing there for a while. What thing? Uh, what was it? Well, was you guys, did you guys climb a mountain? No, yeah, we climbed like a mountain. Side, there, there was, was all like, the yeah, signs, sort of watch out for wild st- rattlesnakes. Structure built into the side of the... Hit, right, we just want to check it out, so we went... Up there for a bit. Yeah, it was it was really cool to visit. It was really cool to see a real ghost town. I've never been to a real ghost That's town. That's an actual ghost town. So, right. I mean, the the, the kind the, you want to see in the movies, right? <laughs> yeah, because the so, so-called ghost town that we went to by the springs was, you know, it Warm was basically springs, yeah. it, it was just like these wood structures. There was really nothing. There was really nothing there that screamed like dwelling, you know, like house. Um, right, but yeah. but Rhyolite was really cool. It was, it was all these old buildings, and they had placards telling. It was a it was a big deal about. in the old days. That, that place had like a there's bag, a, a jewelry store. I had a bunch and of they stuff. Had, they had a lot of, of cool artwork nearby. And there was just a lot of cool stuff just laying out in like their old tin cans and stuff just laying strewn about. Um, so it was it was neat to see kind of like this remnants of a civilization that was there so long ago yeah. that just is preserved. For all time, basically, there was even like a stove or something that was sitting outside. That was that rail car. Yeah, the rail the car. Rail car the where bats, we got bit by bats. Bats said, were all over the place. This, I'm going back to Chicago. Yeah, Dave and I went in. I think we all black went in. Widows, do remember? Guys, oh, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, we, we saw were, the black widows. We were in the Mojave Desert. Near, I mean, right on the edge of Death Valley. I think it's I mean, that's Mojave. That's not the Mojave. Yeah. Wasn't the was that the Mojave it, Desert? It is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was like, hey, the California border is like five miles that way. Let's go check it out. I'd never been in California. Did we ever make it to California? Yeah. yeah. Did we? That's where Death Valley is. Yeah, we made it Dude, to California, bitches. Death Valley, remember? Yeah. yeah. Death Valley is in California. Yeah, we, so we oh, saw, that's right. We took all those pictures at yeah, the Yeah, we sign. took pictures at the Death Valley sign. That was really neat. And then we saw all the... There was uh, right next to Rhyolite, there's this uh, this art uh, installation. So it's called... All the, this outdoor art stuff. The Goldwell Open Air Museum. Was, that's where they got those creepy-ass Last Supper phantoms. Uh, and the ghost rider, the ghost phantom standing next to the 10-speed you know, it bicycle. Like, it was like somebody put a wet blanket over a person yeah. and like froze it in time. It was made by Albert Sosklosky. Uh Creepy. And see, you got to see it on the, on the website. 
you got to check out these photos of the Last Supper and the, and the Ghost Rider. But there was also the uh, the Venus of Nevada by Dr. Hugo Hyerman, Lady of the Desert. Do you remember? Like that, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. Like cinder the hundred like foot the, tall, the in the butt. oh yeah, cinder yeah, block right. woman with yeah. boobs and pubic hair, yeah. and I mean, just standing starkly in the middle of they had, they had fucking those weird, nowhere. Like, cement faces. Yeah, um, in the Goldwell Open Air Museum. Uh, we didn't see it at, at daytime, which how no. curious how it looked. Dead of that night place is awesome. I mean, no. dead of night. The A lot of that was house, very creepy, uh, man. What was that made like from like old hippies? Well, it was nineteen. Well, well, the Rhyolite was from nineteen oh four. I think in the eighties is when the Goldwell Open Air Museum started. But was that a commune or an artist commune? That's yeah. cool. That's so awesome. they lived off a of bus, you know, like. Um, Dave almost got bit by a black widow. Let's not forget I that. I didn't almost get bit. You were mm-hmm. very close, man. I was done. <laughs> done. <laughs> and, of course, the woman's grave, as Oscar mentioned. Uh, yeah. God, I can't remember her name. It's okay. Listen, Listen to episode. episode 53. Yeah, yeah there's this, this strange grave uh, out there in Rhyolite. But uh, I had one experience at Rhyolite that I talked about on the episode. While you guys were out there exploring, I was sitting in the car recording because, again... Oh, I just left you there. You did. You left me in the car, <laughs> assholes. Uh, um, there, there's literally nothing out there again. So it's windswept, uh, nothing blocking the wind out there in the desert. So I was sitting in the car recording on a Tascam to avoid the wind that would corrupt the audio. You guys were out there exploring the ruins. I was parked in front of the bank uh, building. The building that I mentioned during the episode, it's destroyed. It's a destroyed building. Um, all you see is the front face and the right, I can't remember if it's the right or left side of the building, but if you take a picture of the building, people say the destroyed side switches. So in some pictures, the right side of the bank building is destroyed. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember in, you mentioned this. Yeah, in other photos, yeah. the left side of the bank building is destroyed, and it's, it's hit or miss. Uh, for us, when we took pictures, it was the right side of the building that was destroyed. As I was sitting there in the car recording, I started seeing this light come up the road. And again, we're in the middle of nowhere. No car ever appeared, but I did see a light moving up the road, almost as if it was driving towards us. Uh, and then it just disappeared. Didn't, didn't see it go anywhere. It's just gone. I don't know what that was. Right. Um, a couple ghosts are said to haunt Rhyolite. Whether it's a uh, oh the woman in that uh, grave that I can't remember her name at the moment. Right, it's much. not like these people died like some crazy disaster. Donkey. They just left. Right. Right. One of them was a gold prospector, <clears throat> right. uh, followed by a donkey or a horse. We didn't see any of that stuff, but it was still. We don't need sound effects. It was man. really cool <laughs> to be there. Um, yeah. In an actual ghost town from 1904. Yeah, it was neat. Nothing, Epi- not, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of paranormal activity. Yeah, but yeah, that cool. was my first awesome. ghost town. Like I mean, like, like all of us. Yeah. yeah, we had a, a a little mini. It was about uh, forty minutes long. Episode fifty four, uh, called "Mysterious Shrine in the Nevada Desert." There is video on YouTube. That's uh, what you called it of this walkthrough. Yeah, I called it "Mysterious Shrine in the Nevada Desert." What was my title? <laughs> <laughs> and on YouTube, there is a, a video walkthrough of this. So it was as, pretty creepy. Dude, night. this was crazy. As I mentioned, we stayed <laughs> during this trip at the... Uh, oh, I called it the town that dreaded ghosts. That's uh, from the, is that the what town you that it? dreaded down, the sundown. sundown. It's yeah. a horror movie. That right. You. Well, that's the episode <laughs> title you came up with. I called it episode 54, Mysterious Shrine in no. the Nevada Desert. Mine is better. Let me know, folks. It was kind listeners. of a bonus episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. <laughs> Let us know what title was better. <laughs> but as I mentioned, we stayed at the Sunset View Inn in Alamo, Nevada, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert. That's the The gentleman who was head of maintenance there, a guy by the name of Sean, was telling us all throughout our stay, you guys, let me take you on a tour. Let me take you to this place back in the desert. The way he was describing it, I thought it was like 10 feet away from... Oh, no. It was was not 10 feet away. I was nervous, man. Well, you know, Sean, he's kind of cooped up there. He's kind of caged up in the middle of nowhere. He's a young cat. I know, but I was like Uh, nervous because all of a sudden I'm like, all right, let's go go see this. 
And all of a sudden, it's just hot, and we're getting further and further. All of further. a sudden, it's been hot. And I'm well, like, here's the thing. I'm like, dude, like I'm like feel like I feel like I'm gonna pass out if I pass out right so now. So this right? was if not I, carry me. This was not an easy hike. So on the last day, when it we, was a mile. We checked out. It was more than a mile. I we think. checked out of the hotel. We had to get to the airport. <clears throat> Sean was finally like, "Are you guys? Are you guys gonna let me take you to the spot?" And there was this shrine he kept talking about in the middle of the desert. And all throughout the week, we're like, no, no, no. We have a, an agenda. We got places we got to be, people we got to interview, schedules to keep. No. So finally, on the last day of the the, uh, the stay, we agreed to let Sean take us out to this, this place, this thing. And as the guys mentioned, it was not an easy hike. So it's about a mile, if not more. Into the desert, behind the Sunset View Inn in Alamo, Nevada, we went on a hike. And we weren't prepared for all this. We had no idea how well, hard it, it was going to be. It wasn't that bad. It was bad. Okay. And it was hot. I yeah, was it was hot. hot. I was but it's been sweating. hot the whole time, was, guys. My legs were cramping from walking on the damn sand. Right. I'm saying, you were wearing sandals. flip-flops. I was wearing <laughs> flip-flops. I'm going to the airport. I'm having a good time. I am in flip-flops. Right. Not ready to traverse the desert. Right. In, I don't know, 100 degrees. Mm-hmm. Well, I have my boots on. So Sean takes us out there. And as he's taking us out there, he's telling us a story. Listeners could see this on YouTube. They had a strange guest at the Sunset View Inn. Right. A few months prior to this recording. So it's, it's recent. Recent I mean, it's, stuff, it's current. yeah. Very recent. And the guy, like, did a, a lot of work there. He did. He was a, he was a guy... Uh, uh, in between jobs, a union carpenter, I guess. He clearly, yeah, this is insane. It's a basically, I mean, I don't know why you're building up to it. Everyone's listened to it by now. I hope so. Um, we discovered it's basically a murder site. We didn't see the body, but we didn't bear, we didn't uncover, we didn't like use shovels either, and uh, we uncovered remains of um, of a woman's woman's belongings, like uh, book bag. Purse, clothes. I mean, toiletries, um, uh, right. bras, The guy built panties. a shack. The guy moved rocks. The guy did build like a system to keep it from degrading over time. From flooding, right? Uh, from flooding. Uh, a cross that uh, un- will not be moved there from for some time. A giant cross. Um, steeled, like in, it was wood, but it was like steel, like has steel frame. You know, like a little hut type of thing. Right, a hut that thing, was like a shack, yeah. Yeah, anchored to the ground. Anchored, right, right. This... And, this okay. guy, he single-handedly walked with materials, uh, without power, without electricity. Or a truck. Or a truck. He walked from the Sunset View Inn to the location for probably a month or two. Something at to- least two, in I think total. he said. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. And he was out there from the m- sun, up. sun up to sundown every single day. Right. Just building this shrine to... We don't know what to somebody he to what lost we have. or somebody he murdered or right. whatever. We have theories, of course. We mention on the show. We do mention it on the show, episode fifty-four. We we Sean takes us through the hike. You hear us struggling. There's a Chicago boys walking through the desert in the heat. We finally uh, come upon the location, and uh, it was fucked up. It was creepy yeah. as shit. It was wholly original, too. I mean, talk about what we found there. No one knows about. Nobody no. knows about. The cops couldn't even find it, Sean said. <laughs> I believe that, they too. They called the police. Right. That's how eerie it was at that Sunset View I Inn. He said he called, called the police. A times, and they couldn't find it, right? The cops couldn't find it. He offered, no. Sean offered to take the cops to the location. The cops said no. Upon traveling through the desert, finally we see in the distance... A cross. You see this cross in the middle of nowhere. And the feeling starts setting in. Something, something's going to happen here. Something's wrong here. You approach the cross, and it's this massive uh, uh, structure built in the shape of a Christian cross in the middle of nowhere with these wings, a metallic, metal wings mounted to the cross. The base of the cross is completely turned up. The ground is disturbed, obviously. Right. Um, the big like pile of rocks and stuff around it. Big pile, exactly. 
next to the big pile of rocks and the cross, this disturbed ground, is a cover, a blanket. And pinned down with rocks. Pinned down with rocks. And if In you the look, shape of like a child a body, or something. A yeah. fucking body. If you look at the YouTube video, you'll see this. It, it, next to the cross is a, a rock weighted down blanket, crocheted blanket, um, underneath which is the belongings to either a girl, a young girl, prepubescent, prepubescent, pre, 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 I would, no, nah, I would say prepubescent was, girl or a, a teenage, very petite, like an adult. petite, it had to be like young adult, adult, a young female, like a traveler age type, Te- of teenage, yeah. teenager, mid twenties, mid, mid, maybe twenties. Those yeah. we pull back seventeen to twenty five is where I put it. Good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pull back the blanket. And you get a look at the belongings that are underneath. And the, Everything the vibe the that went through my body instantly. As soon as Sean pulled back that blanket, I got the vibe. And you get the feeling that... And I never get the vibe. The body might be right under there. Somewhere. Close. Or under the cross. Like right there. It has to be right around there. Well, <laughs> Ideally, maybe not. So, maybe so right, the vibe right. is, it's like when you look, it's, like it's <clears> death. <throat> You're looking at a dead person. A death. A right. penance. A... Uh, yeah. A morning, uh, Dave right. said, uh, you know, he's making uh, a redemption for yeah. something he did in the past. I mean, it could very well have been right. uh, his Doesn't girlfriend matter. or his wife, or it could have been somebody he he, he knew that died, maybe I a hitchhiker, like I, who I, knows. I felt the possessions were some that have deceased they passed well let's talk about the let's talk about the possessions that were on that blanket we're talking about little bras tampons we're talking about tampons there was a journal there was shaver uh shaving uh, razors Razors, there was uh little petite shirts petite pants clippers yeah, clippers. Uh, what else was I'm really there? glad I didn't find a toy there, though. Oh, we man. found a book, though, for like a creepy, creepy yeah, book, too. Yeah, some creepy horror I novel. There, uh, there, there, there were shoes. Um, shoes. Pants. Barrettes. Tent yes. stuff. Oh, right. Camping equipment. Right. Degraded, yeah. rotten camping like equipment was under there. there. Right. Old backpack. Old backpack. Yeah. Old Like a traveler's old type. Old bags, yeah. rotten. Which makes you think she was young adult. She was traveling. Yeah, right. Yeah. This, this happened long ago. Um, aside from that, there was also a shelter this guy built. Right. And this shelter was, I mean, expertly built, anchored yeah. to the ground with cement. Mind you, there's no power tools. There's no electricity. It's a and mile like into the hot-ass desert. He, like, ahead. leveled off, like, a 15 by 15 foot spot for it too yeah exactly. he did yeah he really desert. did he moved you know rocks that were hundreds of pounds each countless rocks and and created an irrigation system so this thing wouldn't flood this shelter no the shelter was hidden i like how sean uses it for his own like little yeah sean yeah. yeah he left money there to see if people ever went Right, because the money would disappear. Didn't he? Didn't he leave one bullet? And the creator would know if someone was there because the money would be gone. And Sean took the money. Didn't he leave one bullet? There were bullet case. Yeah, there were bullets there. Right. There no, were. He said he left one bullet. Was it one bullet? Yeah, one bullet. Casing or a bullet like a live oh, one full bullet. bullet. Okay. There was. Uh, he didn't know if he left. The it guy for mounted for later. scorpions. He mounted yes. and then preserved. He shellacked. Uh, right, nailed scorpions to the structure of this place. Nice. I mean, not nice, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. it was the cre- I, I think out of the entire trip, guys, that was the creepiest thing I experienced. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. That was nuts. I don't. M- Pants, shirts, I had, a, bras, I had a few things, man. Notebook, toiletries. Those stars all belonging they were moving to weird. a woman, uh, a strange woman, uh, a young woman. Just strange, wrong. Something happened. There. Dave threw out the theory that maybe uh, he was religious because this is a uh, Mormon area. Maybe the guy was ultra-religious, picked up a hooker on the road, killed her years ago, and, and this was his penance. Yeah, and was a builder or something, clearly. Building this, you know, obviously it was... <laughs> Must it be was, working construction or something to know what he's doing. He was a carpenter was or something. Laborious. It had to be. It had to be. Strenuous. I mean, you can't just look at YouTube videos was he to a do truck this. Driver? I think he was a truck he was driver. A union, some union carpenter. No, he's a union uh-huh. carpenter. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, Sean has the guys. He didn't give it to ID. us, but he did not he give did. us this information, which Listeners, is good. He did not. We're not here to out someone. We don't know what he really did. 
We just Sean know he built not, this. We asked. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. We asked for the information, but right. Sean would not give it up as a good hotel. And had he given it, I would have bleeped it. Honestly, somebody should definitely yeah, call right. him and be like, "What is this?" I've thing tried. About? I've contacted Sean once. We communicated. Contacted him again, letting him know this recap episode was coming out. I contacted him about three weeks ago. Never heard from him again. Hmm. Hmm. I actually toyed with the theory that this was Sean's own location. Hmm. And Sean did something. Now Ooh, what a twist. <laughs> now he won't talk to us. Maybe. I mean. Why show it then? How else would he have found that place? You know? Well, it was way, way out there. Who knows? I'm sorry. If I'm, if I'm out there, I'd be wandering everywhere too. I mean, you, David, you'd be. Yeah, but yeah. that far. You would too. I don't doubt it. That was a me, rough trek. Now, this is one of the episodes that we got the emails about, about uh, sound quality. Yeah, man. The, the, the wind was... Sorry, I can't, I can't do anything. Could not fix up. Could not fix it. I mean, we're in the middle of nothing. Yeah. With, with that, wind, was the, that was the best. And the thing is that the parts where it dips down, trust me, you didn't want that raise. You did not want that. <laughs> the, the audio level right. raised, right. That's, I did well, the best. We also witnessed another murder <clears throat> on this trip. Another what? A murder. Another murder on this trip. Oh, yeah, when Jay ran over the snake. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Oh, murder! Anything else you guys would say about the mysterious shrine in the Nevada desert? That was uh, it was pretty pretty intense. Pretty intense. I would say ugly intense, but yeah. Yeah, hopefully we don't get contacted by the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after this episode comes out. I'd rather be, so we can tell them. I want to know. We should I, have this I out. Need, I, I, I constantly think about this. Particular excursion. I mean, I haven't thought about it with the know, show, like, but really, no, yeah. See, like oh, in a man. weird way, it's like how many like crazy things, like it's like things, like weird things, just find us, you know. And it's like this is just another thing, like in in a, in a weird way, it's like okay, it's just another weird thing that happened. How I mean, out of most people I talk to, like I'm like, oh, dude. Yeah, I was over here, and this happened, and they think I'm bullshitting. And I'm like, okay, only if you would know. Exactly. You know what I mean? Ex- people have no idea no. what it's like to walk in They're our like, shoes. Oh, yeah, no. No one does this, Joe. No. Nobody does this for podcasting. And it's like, I mean, not even just podcasting, just, I think just us in general. Like, we're just attracted to Well, you and Dave, stuff. absolutely. 100%. What do you mean? How many... Us? Well... <laughs> how many crazy stories can we say that that this happened, yeah? And uh, it's like, dude, like, I'm like a lot of times I'm like, yeah, like, you know, like when, when I was in high school or this and we were doing this and they're like, yeah, ha, ha. and like, no, it's he, true. He's it's real. Serious, and we have photos and you know. yeah, it's kind of real. Yeah. And it's like, it's right. And that's like, <laughs> Amen, are people man. just lame or are we just nuts? I, think, I, know, I don't well, get it. I think we're a little bit nuts to do what we do, but people are pretty lame. Oh, something crazy did happen. I remember now. Um, Go for it. In the span between um, Nevada and today. Uh, Lexi and I, well, I mean, I saw it more than she did. She was looking away. We saw a, a train splat a car. What? Where? Uh, over on um, Northwest Highway and so is that Park Nagel. Ridge? Park Ridge? Nagel. Park Ridge area? I think so. Sure. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. I was like, uh, we were, it was like traffic, um, it was like rush hour, like four or five, and I was on my way home. PM. PM, right. And uh, broad daylight. Not a.m. like right I, now. I, I mean, I it's 4.40 in the corner of my eye, and then I saw the full thing because I was staring. It was direct, I was going towards the, the cross, and the light was on, the train was coming. I guess someone tried to run it, or they were stuck in the no. traffic between. Completely, yeah. Damn. Oh. Wow. Yeah, and we did drive by it too, and everything, and they they covered the bodies by then, but no one survived that. No way, zero people. Wow, no way, geez. nothing could survive that. The car did not look like a car anymore. What time is it? That was crazy. Right now, it We're is speaking about uh, that. So <laughs> came up. <laughs> it's four forty-one. We, yeah, we should. We Does should that go. Mean McDonald's breakfast is going on Open. right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll get go for some breakfast. That's for sure. There's no Lexi, tacos could there. Could you go for some breakfast? Guys, I need to wake up. Give Lexi the mic. <laughs> let, Mac, let, 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 Mac, Le, let Lexi say something. Dude, she just wants to sleep. Lexi. I just want to sleep. <laughs> That's what you're going to say to our what else? thousands and thousands of listeners? Hello, thousands and thousands of listeners. Aliens are real. Aliens are real. All right, guys. We I'm had gonna, an experience. I'm going to tell you that I need to go to sleep because <laughs> I need to wake up at 8.30 in the morning. You know what I have to so, say to that, David? Um, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, so damn paranormal. I'm, 
This was great. It was great reminiscing. It was good it was seeing great, you guys. guys. Um, oh, and you, miss us? you still have my Tascam and cameras, right? I have your cameras. Don't okay. let me forget your cameras. Yeah, make sure to put those on the chair by my stuff. All right. Anyways, I'm going to go uh, sleep. I'm going to go to sleep on your couch. and <laughs> so then... The kids are going to wake you up really early, just so you know. Uh... You can probably sleep in the basement. <laughs> great. Listeners, great. again... A lot of changes with the SOS Dash Radio podcast. We are now, but not when we record. We the still record Chicago, the same late ass time. <laughs> the Supernatural Current <laughs> Studies podcast, Chicago Ghost Podcast dot com. Chicago's own pizza. So Leah. damn paranormal. So damn paranormal. Make sure and check us out on GoDaddy. Try GoDaddy dot com. that joke SOS is that now. Dash we're radio. Not Audible. You you get a free trial and a free book. From Audible, I'm still reading The Exorcist from like eight months ago uh, at audibletrial.com, whack SOS radio, no dash. Why is it taking you so long? Please. Because I, I listen to podcasts. I'm almost done with the Dark Whenever Tower. Whenever I travel, I I'm listen almost done to with the podcasts. Dark Tower series. So, speaking of podcasts and traveling, there's a podcast I'm listening to right now called Robots for Eyes. Robots for Eyes. Eyes. Okay, is it four F O R or is it like the number four? Four F O R. Robots okay. for eyes. Check them out on my iTunes. Give them a rating. They're two guys from the UK, and they talk the about the same subjects we talk about. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, I like to kick back and relax and think that it's the, it's my two favorite Beatles telling me fucked up stories. Oh, it's very well researched. Uh, very good quality. It's a good podcast. You just like They're how funny. they say mobile, don't you? Dude, they say crazy words like. Like uh, Penny's worth? No, they say like <laughs> pub instead of bar. Well, yeah, and they say bloke, and they say a fellow? crazy things like the Beatles. Beatles would say, and it's the Robots for Eyes podcast. Well, I'm sorry, everyone that is an American and right I now. Like I'm them. really sorry. I for really everyone like them here right in this now. Room. <laughs> um, it's okay, no, I, I love the accent too. I was I just really listening do. to an episode they did on uh, the Toolbox Murders, which is something that happened in the '70s in California, which is just. Fucking horrific. Have you ever seen it? But hearing it come from people from the UK. Have you seen English porn? No, I'm still talking about <laughs> Robots for Eyes podcast. I know you are. Uh, I just want to give them a shout out because we always go back <laughs> and did. forth on Facebook and, and Instagram. These guys are great. Uh, cool. So, listeners, definitely check them they out. They are our counterpart across the pond, as they would our say. Our counterpart across the pond. But they do their research. Joe Unlike Eerie. us. Unlike well, us. All right, so, Joe Erie. They do no, the we research. Need, we speaking about research. We Joe, I say, this. wait, I just want Joe to say Robots for Eyes podcast. Robots for Eyes podcast. And speaking about research, I do. Um, all right, I want to get in a little bit about this, uh, you know, this British. Um, what the? The British invasion? No, it's British Are you practicing for your tie right? five minutes? British porn stuff. Yeah, okay, Where did that come from? I'm, I'm getting back into this right now. So, like, Joe's so, getting his so second win. You know, they have crop circles, okay? They, oh, yeah. They, they actually um, do a crop circles on their, uh, you know. Their no, areas. we don't know. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? The listeners don't Oscar, know their pubic is this, areas. Oscar, edit this out. No. <laughs> don't edit out Robot for Eyes podcast, though, because listeners got to check them out. Yes, we should cut it. That's the one I'm listening to right now. I don't know if I could. I can't it's like, say. It's like a new thing, you know, like in like the 90s, like how you have the lines. Like back of like in, in the red, hair, huh? Lines, yeah, in the hair? with lightning bolts. And because the lines remember, if you're pointing to your head, listeners can't. Oh yeah, they can't, can't see, see this. Okay, well I'm pointing <laughs> my balls right now. So back at like in the in the in the in the you know in Britain, they yes. used to do crop circles down there. You know what I'm in saying? Their, in their pubic area? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. My dad's a barber, dude. He, he's totally in the Beatles. He's Robots totally for Eyes stuff. podcast. Yeah. What do you think about what Joe Erie's saying right now? It's true, Oscar. We cannot say Katie Knight take us home because everything changed. So now you could say we're a brand new podcast now, dude. Supernatural current studies. We're the same. So damn paranormal. We're the, so, the same fucking show, bro. I'm not saying to add the same. Katie and I take us. Yeah, she stuff. can't do it because. But we need her to do it though, because uh, you know a female voice. Is it really is, almost? Five I mean, we're morning? we're four oh, yeah. heterosexual males talking about things that you know. I feel like having her as a voice sometimes works. Well, listeners, leave us a, a ratings on iTunes. We'll read your ratings on the air. Danielle Nielsen's going to get something cool. Uh, check us out on Facebook at some, uh, Chicago before. Ghost Podcast on Facebook, <laughs> ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. So uh, damn paranormal. So damn paranormal. Till next time. Manscaping and crop circles. 
Thank you for listening. Well, I'm not doing a different intro, are we? I mean, am I? We will. We'll do something. No, no, no. No, I'm not, right? Not in this one. Okay. We'll do the same intro. No, I mean, ever. Well, no, we're going to have something new. No, I mean, the, you know the intro I made, the music? Yeah. Oh no, that's God, staying there, right? Better, for that's now. For, forever, for this right? one. That's staying forever, right? No, we're going to change I'm it. I'm not doing that again. We're going to do Joe Erie uh, intro. All right, fine. With his custom music. All right, cool. Thank you for listening. All right, lates. Lates. Want to save your soul from hell arriving on our range? Cowboy, change your ways today. With us, you will ride. Man, it's good. They, they were having Nico say something. It's like, mm, like some, some girl's name or. Felicia? Felicia. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Dude, there you go. What is it? So damn paranormal. No, but say. Bye, Felicia. Uh, hi, yeah, bye, Felicia. You never heard of Bye, Felicia? No. Dude, it was like, it's. Lexi. He's never heard of Bye, Felicia. No, but but yeah, but but by Felicia, yeah. I, I, but it, for for some weird reason, it just reminded me. Why did that like, just become a thing? Like recently, is it because of the the movie? Not recently. It's been out for like five years. The by yeah, Felicia. Bye thing. Felicia. I didn't start hearing but, about it until the uh, the fucking Ice Cube. You people are fucking old. You know what I'm But that's for her, man. But but but, but <laughs> the end reminded movie, me. Like I didn't hear about it until the NWA really? movie came out. Oh no, so I don't it's know been if there was forever. a scene in, in in the NWA movie that talked about that or what. But Straight out of Compton. What does yeah. NWA stand for? Um, um, I want to hear Dave say it. Gentlemen with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, JWA, right? Indiana Jones three with the uh, I is an L and shit. Like I that. never got into You're Harrison Ford up. movies. You never seen it? No. You never saw. You, you never saw. Are you fucking Indiana Nazi? Jones? Are you a Nazi? How does that equate to Nazism? Nazis. Indiana I was Jones like, fights I was, like, Nazis. I was reading this thing about like uh, these like, uh, Jewish Russians, like uh, in the Red Army, that uh, were Just almost worse me. than the Nazis. You guys know what I'm talking about or no? There's no, a no. there's a lot of those people these days. It is really Dave, what do you think of these uh, pastries that Oscar brought for us? Huh? Um, they are raccoon food <laughs> for raccoons. No, I don't know. <laughs> is that cool? Does someone else want to do it? Not that so, but it's just so damn paranormal. So damn paranormal. How about... Cool. Smell my beef hole. <laughs> is that a good slogan? Blow it's good outtakes. Blow, blow me where the Pampers is? <laughs> oh, oh, was God. that a reference to PCU? You're making PCU Damn, references. I think you're the only one that... Whoa. John making, Favreau? Yeah, he's making... 300-pound John Favreau? He's making references... Where the Pampers he's making, is. John John Favreau is like the uh, like Jonah Hill in that way. I feel like he's eighties Jonah Hill. Uh, I would say nineties Jonah Hill. I like PCU is and skinny, fat and skinny, fat uh, and skinny. Um. Anyway, that's it's weird that he doesn't. He's never heard of Bye Felicia, but he's making PCU. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was watching uh, like Comedy Central all the time in 1997. Well, that the makes sense. Was on, like, every the age he was yeah, a well, young dude, kid. Guess what? I'm 10 years younger than you, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. I missed you guys so much. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's talk. <laughs> beef, 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 Five, beef, beef hole, beef four, hole. Three. Wait, wait. Two, watch. Jay's no, 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 going to no, choke up because it's been a while. <laughs> 52. Like five, four, one. three, two, watch. <laughs> Spill it, Dom DeLuise. Wait, and last Oscar. Every so five seconds, damn. Like Margarita's. <laughs> yes, okay. Let's clink. Cheers. Clink to... Uh, How come we're like at the same you know what, exact level? Look at that. Oh, you guys. Oh, we're yeah. literally at the same level. Both Joe. Both. Cheers. Uh, Lexi, cheers. you're part of this. Butter my beef Welcome hole. back to the family. Eh. What are you drinking now, No more hiatus for you, please. The chorizo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate chorizo. We had a whole we week. Don't say bottle. We had a whole week. I hate with your with your bow, and he wasn't the same. Yeah, I figured. And that's your butt. fault. Yeah, I know. And he turns them into art pieces, like from scratch. Holy shit! Out of spare dick foreskin. And he did all the motion by himself and stuff. The last. Do you one, have any of his pieces? The last one he had like this. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, Look at this, Joe. Whoa. I'm not gonna get it up. It was a, a bear trap. In what did the you thing? say? I said I'm not gonna get up. <laughs> the last one he did was like a little bear trap. I, I kinda wanna see it, but the gold coin the bear trap closes. Well, I can move your feet. Ten thousand one hundred dollars on No way. But I don't wanna do it, that's my point. It's like maybe a uh, hundred bucks. But not because of you. That's cool. But it's because of you. No, it's because of you, but not right, so because cool. you don't want me to, it's because of you because I don't want to move. Jay, yes, you're, you you guys shared the room, right? Or is like Shared the room. I'm gonna 
<laughs> but those sandwiches are great. I, I still haven't had a good sandwich, a better sandwich since that day, one David made. Oh, hell no. That's cool as hell. I'm just going to envision the best thing on the planet. <laughs> That's very <laughs> cool. You're right. That's it's great, guys. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty fucking awesome, guys. If I was rich, rich, I wouldn't spend that much money on it. Ah, uh, solar system. Cool. That's what I'm imagining. Hey, re- remember? That's the best I could think of. Jay. Yeah. You're what? like, I'm not sleeping with Oscar anymore. He's saying oh, weird really? shit sleep. Oh, dude, yeah. Oscar yeah, was so. weird. How do you sleep with him? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, apparently, <laughs> I, I kept talking in my sleep. Lexi, how do you Jay sleep with this guy? He does weird shit. Yeah, Jay's like, yeah. He was, oh my god. Joe, what did he the, say? What, I don't, what, what, what did he say? Like, I don't remember what he's. It was like, um, he's I'm like, gonna pin her down or something. No, like, no, he he's like, I'm gonna flip you over. No, no, eat her out. You said. Was that what it was? I think that's it what was something it was horribly weird, creepy man. that you don't want to hear at like four in the morning and when you're dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, it was crazy. Yeah. This yeah. is the one he sold for ten thousand dollars. I don't remember any of it. He told me the so day. That, the of course, I never remember. Draw it open. Dude, I want one. I thought David wanted to start. SpongeBob. It's always him. Man. He's the last person to distract. Come on, man. It's a classic I'm shit, man. Tired. Joe, where are you going? You're sleeping here. No. Nope. Did you see the way they set it up downstairs? It's nice, right? How do you have it set up? Wow. Are you staying? Huh? Are you guys or no? No, you fucking staying. No, you're gonna drive me home, right? You don't have a ride. That's pretty cool. Oh, the cuts. The nice. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good the fuck? No, if you have a ride, I'll give you a ride. No, there was something that happened to a chef recently. I got yeah, like I pillows and a blanket. And Any word? Ago. Did you know him? I, I, I didn't know him. Yeah. And alcohol in the backseat. That's hers. Oh, wow. <laughs> How the fuck do you do that? No. It's, it's like no. my Oscar, you really, this, this, is, is on a, this is on a nickel. Dude, you have no idea what my mind is creating. It's better than Dude. whatever's on the phone. All right, let's go because we have like a whole like hour and a half. We got a lot. We got a lot to cover. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, motherfucking one. And welcome to the Supernatural <laughs> Current Study... <laughs> so I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. I'm sorry. I couldn't... Well, Oscar, out of all fucking, I rarely would. I rarely you know? interrupt. So that was my first. And time. then I'll go through. Uh, so when I, you'll know my cue, I'll be like, and I'm your host, Jason Knight, and I'll go. And joining me are is, is or are. Like, yeah, we're asking is, her, right? <laughs> or joining me? Community college. Joining me is right. Me. No R because you don't go through them all. And joining me are no. Joining me is R. Like, what did Johnny Carson say? No R. It's R. <sighs> He said, "Put it." And, in my journey, and joining, and <laughs> joining me are. are. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. Good. That's our. Please, someone send feedback. Cause it's going to be in the outtakes. Uh, mm. So we'll use his music as intro and bumpers. What? Instead of saying "so damn par- paranormal," say "soda pa." <laughs> but if we gave you a clip <laughs> of his soda music, pa, I actually laughed at a Dave joke. I hate you. <laughs> Since when do you do that? Absolutely. It was really funny. <laughs> Have more to drink. I liked it. He gets funnier as you drink. I know he does. Everyone gets funnier as they drink. Could you lace in words? Lace in ah! words? Yeah, so layer over you... the music. It's so like if we said Supernatural Current Studies podcast. Or like taking laughter out. So damn I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to send you some like tracks and you could put shit over it. Push it over what? The intro? Yeah, because, yeah. No, oh, that's right. easy. So basic, I mean, right. basically, I'm going to send you a we track. Call put, we call, one we call track put it under it. One, uh, one. Think of the uh, Pink Floyd It'll song just layer it over it. It's fine. Easy. Do I look 40, 50 years old? Super What's wrong easy. with 40? I'm fucking okay oh. with you. <laughs> but that, that shouldn't be too hard, right? Just to fade in, like, the just supernatural in the email, I'll be back. Yeah, okay. okay. We're not going to do it for the next one? It's like you asking me, can you take, can you separate the audio from the video? I'm like, yeah, that's two seconds. <laughs> I tried. That was really cute, though. That was cute. <laughs> it was cute. Oh, yeah, cute as fuck. <laughs> All right, five, four. Hey! <laughs> four, three, two, Welcome to the Supernatural Occurrence Studies po- No, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so damn paranormal, so damn all the time. I wanted to say <laughs> soda pa. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to say soda paranormal pop, you never finished. Damn it. so. <laughs> oh. Jay, I'm getting hot from laughing. Here. It's dude, fucking why, a- wh- dude, why don't we do it backwards? Yeah. Sorry, so this is this is what we should do. So damn paranormal. I like it. But do it backwards. Like it? And then... Whoosh. 
Oh, oh come on, that's hard. Do it together. <laughs> no, that's, that's Oscar. So, so as, Oscar, as you're I, adding work to Oscar. I mean, you're as I'm saying, uh, so damn paranormal. It goes as backwards as I'm saying it. Oh. That's stupid. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's, I'm sorry. Let's get serious. Here. I'm just. No, that's that's fine. Go ahead, count it down. Fucking three, it's two. It's supposed to be peanut butter cup. It's his peanut butter. This is peanut butter. It totally does. Okay. I guess so. <clears throat> three, two. Welcome to the supernatural. No. Fuck. What's the actual intro? Tell me the actual Welcome intro. Welcome to the fifty fourth, fifty fifth episode, fifty fifth annual of the show. Of the, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, you could also say "Welcome to the," you know, and no, then say it's our fifty fifth episode. Like that's a thing you can say. That's how I do it. Just start whenever. Finger your ear hole. Hello, ghosts and ghouls. My name is Buck, and I'm here to fuck. <laughs> I got my bitch splitter. We're get fast. Get nowhere fast. Five, four, three. So damn paranormal. Let it, okay, give me like two seconds of space before we get started. I'm shut up. Yeah, so he could edit. Five, four, three. Five, four, three. Two.